LGU LGU Pontevedra pala. Nelia M. Tan. Thank you. 
Ate John, dyan na si Ma'am Amy. I-admit ko na ha. Kausapin mo. Good morning, Ma'am Amy. Ay, ang ganda ni Ma'am. Diyos ko. Pwede ko ba kayong introduce yeah, na din? Good morning. Ang ganda ni Ma'am. Isa pa rin si Ma'am. Mara magaganda ang plans. Good morning. Ayan, nandiyan na yung mga tanim ko sa likod. <laughs> yes. Sa, maganda sana yung nasa ano, nasa ano yun Ma'am, Terrace. <laughs> Dami. <laughs> Oo, oh, oh, pero mahirap tayo mag ano doon, mag background. <laughs> oh, kamusta, kamusta po weather dyan, ma'am? Okay naman. Ay, Sa awa ng Diyos, it's good. Sana tuloy-tuloy. Yes. Ano, Opo. Ma'am, ilan pwede... bang participants natin, Jo? Ma'am, uh, we are expecting kasi 80 packs, pero um, yesterday, ma yesterday po, ang um, matin po is um, around 60. Ah, okay. So, from Anong different... level ito? Anong level ito? Basic? Basic, ma'am. Opo. Ah, okay. Actually, ma'am, mix parang mix na rin kasi may iba rin mix na. na rin. Ano po, yeah, yeah. Po. Tapos, uh, parang halo-halo na po siya, ma'am. Ano, uh, uh, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao po. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Pero mas okay. marami yata, ma'am, yung sa, sa Visayas po. Ah, okay. Oo. Uh -huh. Ayan. Sige. Tapos, What time ba tayo mag-uumpisa? Siguro, ma'am, mga 8.05 will start na ah, po. Sige. So for okay. the meantime, ma'am, let's check muna, ma'am. Mag-tekran tayo ng inyong presentation po. I-up muna po natin. Sige, sandali ha. For a while, mag-ano lang ako. Kandali, kandali, Jo. Ay, sige, okay lang po, ma'am. Thank you. 
I share screen ko jo. Yes, ma'am. Municipality of Kainta. Also, may Kainta, ano pala? Zala, tato. Sandali. Jo, yung Sige. background ko pala, palitan ko, ano? Yes, ma'am. Yung huli ko pong in-email na LM, LMP na ano po. Yeah. Yan. Yan. Ito, diba? Galing ni ma'am. Ah, sandali. Paano ko siya, ano, sa screen share? O oh, sa, oh. I mean, sa background. Sa ma'am, dun sa left side, naka-laptop kayo, ma'am? Yeah, naka-laptop. Uh, so, meron ma'am sa lower left, yung stock video po, may arrow up po doon. Sandali, ha? Pero ito ma'am, naka-download na po. Ano, ano, ano. Yeah, na-download ko na siya dahil. Uh, choose virtual background. Yes. Okay. Yan. Tapos punta kayo doon kung saan nyo siya din-download. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then, yun na yun, okay. di ba? Yes, tas AX nyo lang ma'am, X. Pakaklik nyo sa logo nitong nung background, X nyo lang po yung ano nyo po. Sandali, since that a shared window is closed. Wag ka. Wag kang hindi, anay. Sandali, uh, ha? Up. I have a green screen. Virtual backgrounds. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> mirror my video. Asan na ako dito? Plus, add image. Yung plus, yes ma'am. Plus, tapos hanapin nyo ma'am kung saan nyo dinanload yung ano po, yung background. Yeah. Tapos, Open. X. Hmm. Ito. Zoom, then. Ay, ay, di ba? Mukhang di pa, sandali. Oh. Yes. Saan ba, da, saan ba day? Kaya kindly guide me again. Uh, Ma'am, uh, from Zoom, choose background. Di ba, nakapunta na po kayo sa choose virtual background. Hmm, Nakatanya. Tas may plus ma'am yun share. kanina na. Wag muna kayo mag-share ma'am. Regular ano muna po, Zoom. Okay. Ano nga ba yung kanina? Nawala. As uh, doon sa ano ma'am, stop video, meron pong choose virtual background. Sa left side po, lower left side. Yeah, choose virtual background. Yeah. Okay. And then, kung wala pa siya sa mga... Na. Ayan, i-click nyo lang yun. Na i-click nyo po. Pagka-click nyo ma'am, i-close nyo yung nasa taas po. Uh -uh. Nakaklik na siya, pati ayaw niya sumunod sa akin. Close sa taas. Okay. Parang ayaw pa rin. Ayaw. Choose virtual background. Okay. Ako. Then, di ba ito yun? <clears throat> Mirror my video. I have a green screen studio effects. Ah, baka dahil ano, yung background niya. Kaya. Bakit? Okay. Wala naman. Oo. Yan, ganyan nga. Ayun. Pero ma'am, nakita niyo naman ma'am, no? Nakapag-choose kayo ng ano? Doon sa virtual backgrounds po. Nandun naman yeah, po. Oo. Oh, so, tapos na-click nyo siya, ma'am. Yeah. 
Tapos ma'am, yung ex ma'am, hindi dun sa ano ha, sa picture dun, sa taas po ng box. Yeah. Sa taas ha, yung close na ano. Mm, but hindi pa rin na papalitan yung background ko. Mukha matindi ang kapit ng mga plantita niya, mama. <laughs> Ay, Ay, remove, mag- baka ano, remove pin muna. Sandali ha. Okay, ulitin Sige. natin. Choose virtual background. Ayo talaga yes. magpaano nitong mga ano ko. Gusto yata <laughs> mag- <laughs> magpakita. Pili ko ma. Ang ano ah. Okay, then close. Sige nga. Asan na ako? Nakita mo na yung ano ko, Jo? Hindi, ma'am. Hindi pa rin. Po. Wala pa. Hindi pa rin na chi-change yung background ko? Hindi pa, ma'am. Pero bukas naman na. Oh, pero bukas nga itong ano, itong background. Yung background mo nga is, yun. Oh, Sige nga. Pal- background mo yan, di ba? Yes, ma'am. Ganyan dapat. Oo, sige. Balitan ko ulit, ha? Choose virtual background. Bakit nakaano ito? Ma'am, ma'am may i-share po ako, ha? Ay, sige. i-send ko sa i-send ko sa messenger na lang. Wait lang, ha? May i-send ako sa inyo, mama. Sige. Diba? Pero kasi Oo nga Nakagano na siya eh May sinend po ako sa inyo sa ano, messenger po Sige, eh, ano ko muna I- uh, Minimize ko muna Kasi ano, ang messenger ko nasa cellphone ko Hindi dito sa Ganun. laptop Sige, wait lang mama Sa email na lang kasi, Ma'am, i-share screen ko na lang Pwede naman, share screen ko Tignan ko mama Ito ma'am, mag-share screen ako ha, nung ano, instruction ko. Sige. Ayan, Ma'am Aimee. And then, what will I do now? Ayan, di ba, Ma'am? So, yeah. i-click nyo po ito. Minik nyo to. I-click ko. Yes. Tapos, ito, Ma'am, yung X. Yes. Ayan. Pagka-close yeah. nyo yan, Ma'am, automatic lalabas na po si background. Ah, sige, sige. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am. Oo. Dali ha. Ano nga ba yun? Mukha talagang ayaw mag-cooperate nito. Sandali ha. May may time pa tayo. Ate Jo, kausap ka ni Ma'am. Ma'am? Sabi ko, anyway, may time pa tayo. Yes, Ma'am. Oo, hinahanap ko. Kasi naid ko siya kanina sa desktop. Ah, wala. Hindi, wala pa siya doon, Ma'am, sa ano? Sa loob nung no. ano niya? Nandoon kanina pero nawala. Biglang nawala. Ulitin ko na lang. Sige, ma'am. Ah, 
Anong date ba ng email na yun yung mayroong ano, Jo? Yung mayroong background? Yung ano, ma'am, uh, I think... August 31? Para, para, yes, ma'am, para mga ganyan. O gusto niyo, ma'am, i-email ko lang po ulit. E email nga ulit, dahil, para Sige, madali kong mahanap. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Ito, kita ko na. Nakita niya, ma'am. Ayan. Yan. Download. Ayan. Photos. Okay. Dito na siya. Then... Choose virtual background. Add. Add image. This one. I'm saying... Ma'am, sandali po yan. Apo, sige ma'am. Ayan na. And then, okay, so it's here. Green color is preferred. Okay. Background and filter. Audio settings. So I will click this. Then X. X. Okay. Bakit ayaw pa rin itong mag-appear sa background ko? Ayaw talaga magpakita naman. <laughs> Sinid ko siya dito sa baba. Uh -oh. uh, hindi sa desktop. And then, nang i-open ko to, Kupuntahan choose, virtu uh -oh. choose virtual background. Tapos ma'am, wait, may X, may X po doon ma'am. I-add nyo siya doon. X. Uh -oh. Hindi yata X. Plus. plus. Plus, yan ma'am, plus. Sorry, plus oh, pala. In-add ko na nga siya. Nandito yeah. na nga siya. So, inuwa mo siya sa desktop ko and then nandyan na siya. Yeah. Ayan. So, Tapos, i-click. Yes. Tapos, right uh, click lang. The usual click, click lang. lang naman, di ba? Yes, ma'am. Uh Oo. -oh. Yes Ayan. po. Click lang. And then, yung upper right, sa taas po, na X. X. Yan. Kaya nga. O, oh, yan. Wala talaga. Hmm. Hindi pa rin niya, hindi pa rin siya mag-appear. Sige. Ma'am. Sige, ma'am. Later, i-check namin dito, ma'am. Itanong ko po sa aming technical sige, team. Sige, sige. Okay. I-ano muna natin, ma'am, yung presentation niyo po. I-check po sige. natin. Nasa background na itutuloy ng ano ko. Na background na nang na-upload ko na siya dito sa... Ah, mali. Ano na ito? OneDrive. Sige, share screen. Yes, ma'am. Then, yung material ko. Yes, po. Yung latest na ano natin. Thank you. 
Can we start at meeting packs at 8? And then we start at 8 or 5? Okay, not sige. Yes, Pwede po. po. Nag-random lang kami ng, ano, ng preview. Okay po. Thank you po.
pleasant and wonderful morning, everyone. Before we start, may I ask our Zoom participants to please give me a quick thumbs up so that I would know that you can hear me crystal clear. Okay, there you go. Thank you very much. So to start our today's program, may I request everyone to put ourselves in the most holy, mighty presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Almighty and ever-loving God, we glorify and thank thee your name. You have showered us with so much blessings and your presence continuously remind us of your faithfulness and guidance. This may we humbly ask you to shower our speaker today of your greatest inspiration so that they may share the most of her knowledge, heart, and soul to her topic. May we also absorb the invaluable knowledge, experiences, and put into the practice that we may learn today. We pray that the, you, you bless the committees in charge that they may be able to fulfill their tasks responsibly, that the objectives they have set may be achieved. Your infinite blessing would mean the success of this training. May we be a living witness of your genuine life through genuine love through in the enactment of this knowledge acquired through this activity. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Again, a blessed morning, Tuesday morning to everyone. And this is your facilitator, Jocelyn Beslik from the Capacity Development Division. And welcome to the second day of the online training for the Municipal Local Government Units on Government Procurement Reform Act for the Republic Act Number no. 9184 and its impl revised implementing rules and regulations. Brought to you by none other than the Government Procurement Policy Board Technical Support Office. Just a quick recap of yesterday learning session. We usually open our program where our Executive Director, Attorney Rowena Candis M. Ruiz, welcome all of us in this week-long virtual event exclusively for the Municipal Local Government Units nationwide. Likewise, the LMP provides us the inspirational message for the Municipal Local Government Units. Immediately afterwards, we jumped right through our lecture proper where we had two meaningful and productive learning sessions on Government Procurement 101 and on the efficient procurement measure, simplified posting and electronic submission of procurement reports, procurement updates, policies, and innovation led by our resource speaker, Director Marie Christine D. Andaya. But before that, before we jump in the lecture proper, as we promised, let us first award our special tokens to our early bird participants for today. Okay, so congratulations to our early bird participants from Municipality of Pontevedra, Ms. Nelia M. Tan. And for our second early bird participant, participant is from LGU, Municipality of Cainta, Mr. Roberto Mendez. They joined in, uh, they joined in court and had early before the official start of the program. So again, congratulations ko. And our event secretary shall coordinate with you on how you may claim your special token. Today, I'm particularly excited because we're going to jump right to a learning session three. We will be having the entire session on procurement planning and budget linkage, including the early procurement activities. But before the proper lecture, let's have a quick energizer. So, the title of our energizer for today is Guess the Logo, GPB Members Edition. So, if you remember yesterday, we saw a logo that we saw. So, that is the members of the GPB Board. So this is a knowledge retention of, the, of yesterday learning. So let's have a brain exercise. So we will flash po a logo and then sa chat box po, Zoom chat box, unahan po tayo maglalagay ng sagot, ng tamang sagot kung ano pong agency po yung ima-flash na logo. So okay po ba? Uh, show off ano nga po? Thumbs up nga po kung okay po sa ating mga participants. Yes, okay. So first, our first logo po. Yan, ano pong agency yan? Oh, 
Okay. So, ayan. Naku! <laughs> Bakit naman may naiiba? So, dapat alam natin yan kasi dyan tayo kumukuha na budget. Okay po. So, the right answer is Department of Budget and Management. So, we'll flash again another logo. Ayan po. So, again, kindly uh, drop your answer po sa ating Zoom chat box. Neda, Neda. Tama ba? Neda ba? Okay, so let's check the answer po. Yes, Neda po. Ang galing. So another one. So para check na rin natin kung familiar ba tayo sa ating mga uh, logo na ating mga agency po. So this one po, anong pong agency po yan? DOH? DOH? Let's see kung tama po. Yes, DOH. So another one. So we have last two na lang po na papahula po sa inyo. Magaling, natatandaan niyo po. Okay, how about this one po? Ano pong agency ang logo? DOT? DOTR? DOTR? And the final answer is DOTR. Department of Transportation. Galing. And finally, our last logo po. Yeah. Dapat alam din natin yan. DOF? Yes, DOF, DOF. And the final answer is Department of Finance. Okay, so thank you po sa mga Zoom participants na nag-participate po for this uh, brain knowledge or brain exercise po. Okay? So with that, at this juncture, we would like to remind the participants again po to please accomplish the participants' daily attendance for day two. By clicking the link provided by the GPPBTSO Event Secretariat as the as this will be the requirements for the provision of the certificate. Rest assured that all information provided shall be treated with utmost discretion and confidentiality. Okay? So don't forget po, lagi tayong mag attendance So just check your uh, chat box. Nandun po yung link nila. All right, I believe we are all excited and ready to begin our lecture proper. And with that, it is a great pleasure to introduce to you this learning session's resource speaker. So our speaker is presently assigned as the head of the Department of Budget and Management Regional Office in Eastern Visayas, back to her beloved region. She is a career executive service officer three, a certified public accountant by profession, na public financial management practitioner. She has extensive background as a resource speaker, resource persons advocating on public financial management, both for national government agencies and for local government units. Her expertise includes fiscal administration in government, specifically on budgeting and procurement processes. For four years, from 1982 to 1986, she was a part-time professor on accounting and auditing subjects at the Divine Ward University in Tacloban City. As an accredited Government Procurement Policy Board trainer on the Government Procurement Reform Act under Republic Act No. 9184 and its implementing rules and regulations, she has been conducting procurement training since 2005 and in the present. She is one of the most requested resource person on the topic by agencies on government, not just in Region 8 and Region 7, but even outside these two regions due to her rich experience in government for 40 years this coming to this year. She was an active official of the Regional Development Council of Eastern Visayas as well as in Central Visayas. She was assigned last 2018 
up to 2020 as DBM Regional Director for more than 17 years in the Eastern and Central Visayas. She provides useful initiatives to improve the quality of life in the region, providing public financial management assistance, not only in local government units, but also in the national government agencies, especially the state universities and colleges. She is also a certified plant Lola, growing and taking care of plants can, uh, can ease her anxiety during this pandemic. It helps her relieve stress and make her happy. It's her, more, it's, it's her morning routine to drink a cup of coffee while in her garden with full of flowers, indoors and outdoor plants. The Regional Director of the DBM Regional Office 8 and a GPPB recognized trainer, please welcome Director Imelda C. Laceras. Good morning, Joe. Thank you for morning, that man. kind introduction. Nice to see you again. And uh, I'm also glad to be part of this uh, noble activity, uh, a tie-up activity of the League of the Municipal Mayors of the Philippines with the Government Procurement Policy Board Technical Support Office. So again, uh, uh, I hope to be able to provide additional insights and give justice to the requested topic for me to handle for this morning. Okay, so uh, uh, I was informed that yesterday you had a very insightful discussion on the basics of procurement, which is Procurement 101. And I used to discuss that topic as well and uh, uh, for the second day in the module, which is procurement planning and budgeting is the more closest to my heart. Why do I say that? Having worked in the Department of Budget and Management for several decades until the present, and I have five more years to go before I call it a day <laughs> in government public service, uh, we have been really exposed to both uh, national government agencies and local government units budget processes. And we have also encountered several experiences, learnings that helped us uh, understand better how difficult it is, how challenging it is, and how exciting it is doing procurement at the level of the local government units. Because we all know that local government units are also bound to observe the budgetary calendars. That's why it's very important that we follow and understand uh, the need to synchronize procurement planning with the budget process. So with that, let me now uh, invite everyone to my uh, PowerPoint presentation that I will share so that we can maximize our time in going through this uh, module. And of course, in between, we can add more uh, actual experiences, learnings that we have uh, acquired over this past several decades being in government. And we would encourage our participants to also share experiences by chatting in our prescribed uh, chat box, online chat box. And there could be instances in the course of my discussion that I would be asking some uh, parang ano, reality checking with our participants. And uh, how I wish this is done online so I could see your faces, your, your happy faces, and see eye to eye and be able to immediately know whether you are getting it clearly or not so clearly by the way you react, <laughs> by the way you see, and uh, uh, through your reaction in your faces. However, uh, we can maximize the use of this blended platform, this online platform, and even go beyond the expected number of participants. And uh, since we are adult learners, uh, in any training that we attend, in any learning process, this is always a two-way. You get to know, I also get to know something new for the day. And 
Also, we get to learn, relearn, and even unlearn some of what we used to know that are not pala correct, no? Because we could have been, we could have uh, acquired some learnings in the past that uh, over, over the course of time that you have been there working, uh, functioning as members of the BAC perhaps, as end user unit perhaps, secretary, member of the secretariat, TWG. However, since yesterday and up to today, you might be able to, to realize that some of these are not pala in accordance with what are prescribed by RA9184, the rules, the IRR, and the other uh, issuances of the GPPB. So we will leave it to you, to all our uh, adult learners, participants, professional as you are, to process everything. As I've said, you might this might be your first time to learn or this is your second time relearning, sharpening of the saw, so to speak. And uh, the another area is unlearning. So we can relearn, we can learn new things, okay? So for this morning, this will be my outline of discussion. Of course, the basics of procurement planning, the why's, the how's, the what, okay, and the who will be answered. Questions starting with those words. And the need to link this procurement planning uh, process to a bigger process along public financial management, which is the budget process. Otherwise, there will be problems that we will encounter if we are not able to really operationalize the needed linkage. At times, it's easily said than done. We all know that. Better said than done, as they say. But there are mechanics. There are uh, operational. Uh, there are already. There is already a framework, in other words, to see it happening down there at the level of the LGU. And we will discuss that. And of course, two important documents that are outputs of a thorough procurement planning, okay? Two important documents, and I am referring to the PPMP and the APP, which should be complied, not just uh, for compliance purposes, because it's a, requir it's a requirement, but we should be giving more focus on the substance, okay? And the timely submission as well. And another important discussion is one of the re recent, relatively recent budgetary and procurement reform, which is aligned with other PFM reforms that have been initiated by our government led by the DBM. And we are referring to the conduct of the early procurement activity short of award so that implementation of government programs and projects will be hastened, fast track, and no resources of government financial resources will be expiring, will be wasted, and performance of government will be improved. And a review of some of the required posting requirements through uh, making use of the electronic uh, platforms, okay? So these are our guideposts for our discussion this morning. Moving on, so this will be the objective for the module. Of course, uh, important palaga that we are able to understand and apply the fundamentals of procurement planning. Okay, again, this is the weakest link that we have in government, both national and local government units. We have to understand the basic principles that is uh, required for us to do a thorough procurement planning. And we are referring to the market research or a market study, okay? We, we usually refer this to what we call in our ordinary terms at the level of the agencies, we call this pre-canvas, 
Okay, we, we do pre-canvas to get information from the market of the items, uh, technical specs, relative cost of the items, and the, the brand, the models that are available in the market as our input in the procurement planning process. Okay, because again, as I will emphasize later on, there are rules in procurement that we have to observe. And one basic requirement or rule is bawal tayo mag-branding. Kung kaya, kailangan, we are able to do a wider, a more thorough market research so that we are able to uh, mix, formulate a very good technical specifications without necessarily alluding to a specific brand. Okay, para hindi tayo magka-problema with COA and even with other agencies like the Office of the Ombudsman. And of course, another objective is to identify relevant procurement projects with proper budget allocation within a given timeline. As we all know, we have our also government has its own limitations. LGUs, well, you prepare your own budgets, we prepare, you prepare your own plans, you have your set of officials that are tasked by the local government code to plan, to decide, to budget, to generate revenues, still you have your own limitations. And because of that, it, it is therefore imperative that all our procurement undertakings are done within this context, within, within these limitations, okay? So let's start. Very basic question, okay? What is procurement? When you hear the word procurement, what comes to mind? Sige nga. Since yesterday, you have been hearing about procurement in the TV, in the news. Procurement has been uh, very controversial this late, no? Uh, with all the discussions in the Congress and in Senate. And which brings us to a basic question, what is really procurement? Is, is procurement that easy? Is procurement really difficult? Well, what is sure is there is a process, okay? In other words, we cannot do, just do it in, a, in just a, a click of our finger because we just thought of it, no? We just thought of it that we have money, we have a need to, to be addressed, and so we can immediately do what we need to do, which is to buy, to procure, rather, we have to understand it from the perspective that there is a required process prescribed by law. And that process requires a selection process, a selection to be done by certain people tasked by the law and the rules to do that. Because not anyone, not anyone in government is privileged to be part of that core group that we call the procurement key players. And I'm sure all our participants right now belong to this group, the cream of the crop, so to speak. Why do I say that? As I've said, you are privileged to be part of the procurement key players in your local government unit. Because number one, you are given the opportunity to be trained. And now you are there attending to this uh, one week training. Second, it goes without saying that you have been, you have the trust and confidence of your head of procuring entity, which is the local chief executive. And because why, why, why is it so that the, the local chief executive bestowed on you that high level of trust and confidence? Because you have shown over through your behavior, through your actions that you are a person of integrity and so you should be able therefore to prove to all that you really deserve to be that to be members of this core group and as i've said that's why the process of selecting the process of choosing the best offer 
from a seller is not just, just not just easy, but it is not also difficult for us not to be able to successfully do the process. Okay. What is crucial in this process is everybody uh, tasked to be part of the core group has to understand the bigger picture and we will be bringing you all to that bigger picture to understand the whole procurement process, starting from procurement planning to the actual selection process up to the procurement implementation of the various contracts or purchase orders that are result of a successful procurement process. Okay, and later on uh, in tomorrow's topic, since yesterday and today, these are basic discussion points, medyo may pagka-administrative in nature, but these are the backbone of a successful procurement undertaking. We cannot uh, say that these are not important discussions. We should not take for granted these discussions because as I've said, this can make or break your actual selection process later on, okay? So the process, as I've said, requires uh, all the key players to follow prescribed steps, procedures for the government to be able to choose from among suppliers, sellers who can fit best the need. Remember, in government, we procure not because we have budget. Budget is an input to a successful undertaking, to a successful procurement undertaking, okay? We cannot procure without a budget, of course, without financial resources. So we just don't procure because we have so much budget or we have so much financial resources. But the basis for a procurement to, to be to be done in any government agency because there are needs. There are needs. There are resources that we need to go through our day-to-day -day mandate to be able to serve the public, particularly LGUs where we are, you are in the front line. You are expected to deliver basic services of the government and therefore you cannot afford that the basic, the, the resources that are needed for you to carry out the delivery of the basic services will not be available. So therefore, we have to ensure that before the agency carry out its function in delivering basic services, all, you, all resources that are needed are already procured, available in the agency, okay? And when we say fits best the need, in choosing in that whole process, you sh it should always be at the back of the minds of all the key players that we observe the value for money concept. What do we mean by the value for money concept? In other words, the, the agency has to be able to choose from among the sellers who can best offer who can offer the most reasonable price to the government. When we say most reasonable price, lowest, okay? Lowest, however, under the law and the rules, we are not constrained to go and award, recommend award to even the next lowest, next lowest, and it can end up in a way to the highest offer if this is the supplier that can best fit the technical specifications of the items being procured. That is what we mean by the value for money. Not just the cost, but optimum combination of the cost and quality or quality cost combination, okay? Gone are the days where before, as you have discussed yesterday in Procurement 101, that the salient feature now under RA 9184 is the government, we as the buyer, we are looking for the lowest calculated and responsive bidder. Before RA 9184, 
ano lang yung pwede, sino lang yung pwede makakuha ng contract in government? Lowest bidder. And therefore, that was not the best strategy because in the long run, more expensive to the government buying again and again the same item kasi nga, inahanap lang natin dati yung pinakamura so quality aspect suffers. So one of the key reform area in RA9184 is to cure that defect. Hindi lang tayo dapat nagahanap ng mura but mura na pero maganda pa rin yung quality na ino-offer sa government. And we can only say na maganda yung ino-offer na quality if in our identification of the need na kaklaro din natin ano yung why do we say na maganda ang ito yung kailangan natin na quality aspect of the item we need to procure okay or the services we need to procure. We will highlight that as we go through in the next succeeding slides. Okay? So again to sum up Procurement may be easy, may be difficult, depending on how or the extent of our understanding of the entire process. And so we are now moving on to again reviewing, as was presented yesterday also in your discussion, the key players in the entire procurement process. And these are the same key players that should be there from the very beginning. The very uh, the the first step that we have to follow in any uh, procurement undertaking is to really plan what do we need to buy, and so these are the same key players. And I hope all of you, all our participants right now, can situate yourself to any of this uh, grouping. Okay. Maybe the accountants, the cashiers, the inspection committees are also there because they are also equally important to be uh, trained on the entire procurement process. As, as I've said, again, let me emphasize, inspection committee, the cashier, the accountant, uh, usually they are not involved in our made to attend to trainings on procurement. So, dapat lahat involved, no? Kasi walang lalabas na payment sa agency kung hindi dadaan sa ating mga inspection committee. And at times, doon yung bottleneck. Doon nagtatagal ang mga papel kasi nga, uh, they need to review all over again everything kasi from the very beginning, hindi sila on board. So dapat kasama sila from the very beginning as well. Okay. So knowing that these are the key players, let me now invite everyone to this uh, bigger picture that is shown here. Again, to summarize what happens in government, in a government agency as it attempts to plan what to be procured, okay? And so when you plan for a for a procurement undertaking, you will not just plan uh, for it to be uh, ano yung specs, ano yung program of work, kung infra ito, at ano yung uh, cost estimate for both goods, services, and uh, kung consulting, magkano ba yung kailangan natin. But rather, yung pagplano natin is towards the satisfaction of the end user that triggers the procurement activity, okay? Because I said earlier, what triggers a procurement undertaking in an agency? Because there are lacking resources, there are needs that are not yet available and therefore has to be procured. And it starts with... <clears throat> The first quadrant, as you will see this slide, it's divided into four small processes that are labeled one, two, three, four. And if in the past, our understanding of procurement immediately comes to mind the back, yung nagbibiding na yung back, yung nagka-canvas na tayo, yun immediately ang, ang, ang mindset of people when they hear the word 
procurement to the point that some uh, end user units would not at all mind. Kasi sabi nila, ay, hindi naman namin trabaho yan. Kailangan namin yan. but ang magbibili niyan, yung, yung nakatask to do that, to procure is the back naman. Bahala na yan sila. Immediately, ang isip natin, diretso quadrant three. Okay? At times, gani, at times, we fail to even think even forward beyond quadrant three and ensure that the contracts awarded into in quadrant three or purchase orders as the case may be are correctly or strictly adhered to in the actual implementation, delivery, and all. Okay, so again, we have to correct that kind of mindset perspective by again emphasizing that the entire procurement process needs small, small four processes for it to be able to satisfy the initially identified needs. Okay, satisfaction is uh, can 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 be determined later on again by the end user units and most of the time ito ang nagiging cause ng mga maliliit na mga frictions or conflicts in an agency because apparently uh, in the planning process kung mayroon man ha kung mayroon man planning process kasi ito nga ang medyo kulang we kissed link kaya we are going to focus this in this morning's discussion dapat kasama dito ang mga end user units in fact for quadrant 1 they are the key players in quadrant 1 in identifying the needs which will now result to the production or uh, uh, submission of the ppmp by all the end user units okay Again, taken for granted. Ah, hindi na namin yan intindihin yung paano ginagawa ang PPMP. Kasi madali lang naman yan, copy-paste sa mga previous na mga PPMPs. Hindi naman lahat nabili last year. Ibalikan e natin yung last year. Copy na lang. Dagdagan na lang konti. <laughs> Kasi dagdag naman yung NPA natin for 2022. Malaki-laki yata ang budget natin sa LGU in 2022. It's not that easy. As easy as that na nagka-copy-paste tayo, okay? Kasi as you will see in quadrant one, there has to be a basis in filling up the procurement project management plan or the PPMP. And we will go through each of these later on. Now, just to again proceed with the quick rundown of this paradigm, let's just uh, move forward, assume now na mayroon na tayong PPMP dito sa quadrant 1 na nagawa ng lahat ng key players, lahat ng end user units, I mean, aakyat na yan sa quadrant 2 for assessment. Okay? Magkakaroon ng assessment kasi nga may mga limitations ang ating mga agencies. Hindi naman lahat ng nasa PPMP as proposed are deemed approved are deemed uh, within the limitations, particularly budgetary limitations. Kung kaya, mayroong assessment, review, evaluation to be done. So itong first two quadrants are more focused on the procurement planning side. Okay? And babalikan natin ito later on. Now remember, itong output, ng procurement planning, which is the PPMP consolidated into an APP, as I said, will be uh, will determine whether we will su be successful when we go to quadrant three during budget execution phase. As I've said, it can make or break. It can it can uh, we can we can be successful in recommending award or not, and therefore failure of bidding may happen in quadrant three. So kung mag-failure of bidding tayo, wala tayong i-implement. Madi-delay yung mga government programs and project. Okay, so that's why, again, emphasis on the first two because we want to ensure na we will be successful later on 
in doing the process of selection, yun, dinefine natin earlier, and come up with a recommendation to the head of the procuring entity to award and implement later on during the execution phase. So I am emphasizing here, budget execution phase for the actual procurement and implementation. And for the first two quadrants, these are done during budget preparation phase. This is how we link. This is how we synchronize, how we harmonize procurement planning with the budget process. Okay, so moving on, more slides to discuss that later on, the, sync, the, the harmonization of this procurement planning with budget process. Let me quickly go through this diagram, which is uh, a product of a study done by GPPB TSO as they conducted uh, trained agencies to assess extent of compliance in, in extent of compliance sa ating procurement law and rules using the APCPI uh, system, which, which is an, uh, an online system, which was again introduced to the agencies for application and self-assessment. And this is the result that was compiled by the GPPBTSO. Take a look. And this was done, this diagnostic study was done to identify what could be the reasons why agencies are encountering delays in procurement, which resulted to underspending in government. Kasi kung nadidelay yung procurement, delay din yung gastos ng gobyerno, di ba? So, and worse, yung failure of procurement. Kung failure, wala talagang gastong mangyayari. There will be no economic activity that will happen down the barangays, down the LGU. So kung, kung walang economic activity, walang, walang masyadong uh, economic improvement that we will expect to happen, di ba? So that's why kinailangan makita ano ba yung mga problema natin na na-encounter so that we can accordingly also respond to that. And in the recent years, our GPPB, TSO particularly, have been very proactive in helping government agencies be able to address even without agencies telling the GPPB, telling the government na ito yung mga problema namin. Nahanapan na ng mga paraan para ma-address yung mga usually na-encounter na mga bottlenecks in the entire procurement process. Again, because all our agencies since then, since 2003 when the law was passed, nag-implement tayo 2004, nag-training tayo starting 2004, 2005. And in these several years that passed, marami na tayong learnings. Marami tayong na-encounter as we implemented the law. And ito yung mga nakita. 50% uh, were found out, 50% of the reasons boiled down to poor procurement, to poor planning. We can say poor planning at the agency level. And tiningnan further, ano itong composition? Why do we say, ano yung exact uh, uh, areas na sinasabi na medyo nagka-problema which boils down to planning? And nakita na medyo yung mga cost estimates ng mga pinapublish ng mga agencies, hindi tugma. Tinawag siya na poor, meaning mababa. No? Poor cost estimates would, would allude to a low ABC for government projects. Mababa in such a way na hindi siya tugma, hindi siya nagmatch doon sa mga ini-expect na technical specifications of the same item being procured. Kung infra ito, uh, hindi tugma sa program of work na ini-expect na ipagagawa ng agency sa sino man na mananalo. Kung consulting, doon sa again sa terms of reference. So something is wrong here in other words. So we need to take a look at this, matulungan natin yung agencies, 
makagawa ng tama cost estimate at makagawa ng tama accurate more or less na mga technical specifications and another area na nakita is the late submission of the PRs coming from the various end user units. Again, maybe at that time, hindi nga masyado nakakapagplano yung agency including the BAC sa milestones of each procurement activity. Kaya nagiging reactive yung procurement based on PRs. So, na-identify siya na relatively 22% are cost, delays are cost by late submission of PRs. But this can be better addressed right now. Why? Hindi na dapat mag-trigger yung actual procurement sa mga PRs ng end-user units. Why do I say that? Kasi from the very beginning sa pagplano, doon sa quadrant 2, which ay dito, Dito sa APP, mag indicate na kasi ang BAC ng procurement timelines nila, di ba? Mag-consolidate na kasi ang BAC set ng mga common procurement items so that the agency can do a bulk procurement one time. Not anymore based on the PRs as they come, but maybe the PR can now be the basis for the actual release of the item from the supply inventory from the GSD but not anymore to trigger the actual procurement. So therefore, uh, hopefully in the next APCPI that we will consolidate, hindi na ito lalabas na magiging cost ng delay ng actual procurement. Okay? So this was again a result of an earlier APCPI conducted. And take a look at the other side, the other 50%. Marami na dito ang na-addressed by the government. And take a look, there is here something which speaks of low number of bidders, which is equivalent to 22%. Bakit kaya? Ano kaya ang mga reasons ng mga bidders why they are not interested in joining government procurement? If we will again further diagnose this, lalabas na mayroon din dito related to this 50%. Ito, hindi sila sasali kasi nga lugi sila. Mababa yung cost estimate, mataas yung tech specs. E anong, anong ano nila? How can, they, how can they provide the reasonable, the best offer kung malulugi naman sila? So they will not join. Another reasons here, yung typical, yung traditional ano, uh, red tape in government na paisa-isa tayo naghihingi ng mga documents. They don't like that. So anong mga sabi ng mga bidders as we train them as well? Kasi meron din tayo mga separate modules for bidders. They rather join private transactions procurement in private companies kasi doon walang masyadong red tape. So it's a lesson. Sana with the ease of doing business na batas, which is a separate law, medyo nag improve naman na tayo along that line, along this area. Medyo it's high time again that these bidders will already be joining government. Parang bumabalik na ang loob nila na magtulong sa government in providing the much needed services. Okay? Kasi nga we are already addressing some of these causes, some of these reasons. So put together 22 plus 50, 72% pala ang attributed to poor planning or at no planning at all. Yun ang pinaka medyo hindi maganda. Okay? However, as I've said, we are already seeing some improvements. Mayroon na rin naman mga uh, processes na ginagawa ang ating mga agencies to improve and strengthen the planning side. And that's good. Again, because uh, the modules that are now being provided by the GPPB already focus on these key areas. Okay, on these key areas. So, 
as I've mentioned, hindi nga lang 50%, but even more than that. And dito tayo ngayon mag improve sa first two quadrants. Okay? Kasi ito dito ang nasa area ng procurement planning. So, having said that, up to the, as we speak right now, these are still our challenges. And these are not just true sa local government units, but even sa national government agencies. Kung kaya, uh, because again, uh, nakikita, maski hindi magsabi yung ahensya na may problema sila sa procurement, ano yung nakikita naming first indicator? yung budget utilization rate. Pag makita ng DBM, ang BUR ng isang agency, at, at up to now, uh, hopefully in the next few years, we will be going down to the level of the LGUs already in computing or assessing the budget utilization rates. Kasi as of now, hindi pa natin ginagawa yan for LGUs. Sa NGAs, we are already uh, requiring agencies to submit to DBM their budget utilization rate. And nakikita na namin without them telling us pa na may problema ito sa procurement. Tingnan lang namin yung capital outlay BUR. Kung mababa, mababa yung obligation BUR, mababa ang disbursement BUR, sigurado may problema sa procurement. Okay? Saan lang matataas yung BUR? PS, syempre, Sumisweldo, whether gumagawa tayo ng tamang trabaho o hindi. ba? May sweldo pa rin tayo sa gobyerno. Swerte tayo, nasa gobyerno tayo. Even if nagla-lockdown, naga-alternative work arrangement, we still receive the same salary. ba? So let's, in which case, let's improve the way we do things. Okay, let's identify areas where we can improve in the way we plan. Kasi pwede siya magawan ng paraan kung gusto natin talaga. And because of the high expectation from our local government units in starting 2022, because you, we, we will now be implementing the Supreme Court ruling on the Mandanas case where LGUs will now be expected to deliver more basic services as this will be uh, devolved to them by various national government agencies, it's high time that we will level up as well. Okay? We will level up as well in the way we plan, the way we budget, the way we select and do the procurement process, and as well as the way we implement. Para at the end of the day, si Juan de la Cruz representing the entire Filipino the entire community we seek to serve are smiling, are happier than before. Okay? So, these are the basic questions. Parang basic siya. Basic, uh, that's why may tendency tayo to disregard, to take for granted. But uh, this should be the process. A simple Q&A process. Parang question and answer. Diba? Sa mga beauty pageant, may Q&A portion, nagtatanungan tayo para mapili natin yung pinakamaganda, pinakamagaling doon sa mga contenders. Ganon din sa procurement planning. We involve ourselves, as you will see, key players, hindi lang isa ito ha, hindi lang dalawa, but uh, key players on a per end user unit basis. So kung iilang departments tayo sa isang munisipyo, uh, ganun din kadami yung activity na magaganap simultaneously kasi mayroon tayong calendar na sinusunod. Hindi yung kung kailan lang natin gusto. That's also very important. Doing the right things at the right time. Kapi, kung kaya kailangan natin isink, i-harmonize yung activities in the procurement and in the budget process. Okay, basic question. Doon sa need, di ba? Quadrant 1, we have to identify what we have to buy. Ano ba yung mga needs natin? So when we say again, what? 
very clear that we expect an answer in terms of a goods, a service, a project, um, infra yan, or a consultancy uh, services that is needed. So what to buy? Okay, And if the need of the agency is uh, a long uh, equipment, what particular equipment? So one of the common needs that are expected from agencies under the new normal at the LGU level, hindi pa tayo gaano nakakapag build up sa ating mga IT ano uh, hardwares. Marami pa tayo na experience na mga areas na hardly can connect to the internet. Okay, even here in Region Eight, where I am based, if we conduct online meetings with our local budget officers, with the local chief executives in our desire to uh, present to them, lecture them about the Mandanas ruling, about EO138, about the budget process, about procurement, you always encounter problems na uh, nawawala sila online, nagkakaroon ng mga disconnect in the process, nawawala sila, di nila marinig. So maybe it's high time we build up, we strengthen our IT facilities so that we can imbibe and adapt to the new normal. So as LGU's plan for 2022, as you are now doing your devolution transition plans, you are now preparing your DTPs for you to prepare to absorb the additional functions, include there the needed uh, facilities for the agency to carry out expected additional responsibilities. Kasi di ba, anong sabi ni Spider-Man? Greater resources, greater power comes greater responsibilities, di ba? So with the greater resources, with the increased resources in terms of financial, you can build up your human resource by expanding probably your or your uh, organizational structure and staffing pattern. But of course, you don't procure people, <laughs> except if you hire consultants. Well, that could be. But we are looking uh, at a direction that LGUs will be maximizing existing human resource. Kasi marami tayo sa LGUs, uh, mga plantilla na hindi pa naman na ma-maximize ang filling up. So, i-maximize muna yung filling up. So, no procurement in there. But rather, dito tayo sa facilities like equipments, buildings, supplies, and all. Okay? So, how many is another question. Kung clear na tayo na we need to buy additional computers, another question would be, what kind of computer? Kasi alam naman natin, maraming klaseng computer. So, i-emphasize din natin yung klarong specs. Ano yan? Desktop ba yan or laptop ba yan? And the next question, how many? In terms of quantity. Okay, basic question again. Diba? Uh, another important question that has, has to be answered. Anong klase ng computer? Ano yung details ng computer that we have to procure? Because we all know, again, na iba-ibang hitsura, iba-ibang specifications ng computers. Diba? Even desktop, even laptop. Ang dami, brand, ang daming models. And again, because bawal tayo mag-branding, all the more we have to be clear in describing the details. Again, what, another, what is another basic question? Magkano kaya? Magkano kaya yung ganun na klase ng computer? Okay? Para alam natin, multiply by the quantity, more or less, alam na natin magkano ang kakailanganin isama sa budget. Because again, as I said earlier, this procurement planning will be done simultaneously as an input to the budget preparation phase. Ito yung linkage para wala tayong ipoprocure later on na wala sa budget of the LGU. Otherwise, it will remain as a plan. 
and will never materialize. Di po ba? So, basic question, how much kaya? Of course, we don't just uh, encode or copy what is the cost right now in the market. That is just our take of point. That is just a ball figure for us to add on. Add on other costs. Because remember, if we plan that we will procure this months after, how many months after? Years after. If it will take a year before. Mas maganda. Yung planning is done a year before the actual procurement. So mas wider yung time, bigger yung time allocation natin to do a more thorough market study. Okay? So, important, what is the cost? And i-add on din natin, hindi lang yung acquisition cost dito, as we will discuss later on, but including the other uh, related cost. When you say related cost, Costs that are crucial on top of the acquisition cost for that item procured to be functional para immediately magamit siya ng ahensya. Otherwise, yung again, yung need for the item will not be satisfied. Correct? Kaya nga tayo nagpo-procure dahil we need, we have to satisfy the need. So that's very challenging. What are these other costs? Okay, we will discuss that later in the next slide. Another basic question. Kailan? When do we need it? So, of course, definitely yung sagot, sasabihin natin, in 2022 or moving forward in 2023. Kung, kung yung tanong na to, when you need it, wala na dapat magsasagot na ngayon, 2023. At 2021, I mean. Kasi late na tayo. We should not be planning now for 2021. Rather, for 2021, we should already be at quadrant 4. Quadrant 4, meaning, ano na dapat ang nangyayari ganon sa mga ahensya ng gobyerno? Lahat na ngayon dapat nag implement na ng mga kontrata. Kung baga, umuusok na yung kalan. <laughs> we are now already in the process of cooking. Niluluto na yung mga project. Kaya nag aso aso na, yung nag smoke na. Diba? Or kung goods naman ito, may delivery na na nangyayari. Okay, hindi na yung nagpaplano pa what to buy, what to procure. So ang sagot dito, dapat uh, looking forward na tayo, 2022 or 2023. Is that enough answer? Is that enough answer? No. Ano dapat ang accurate answer dito when you need it? Exact month or quarter. Kasi alam natin yung one year, 2022, is composed of 12 months. So for the back to do the actual, the appropriate modality in its procurement process, hindi magsushortcut yung back kasi bawal ang shortcut. So dapat ipapaalam natin sa back early on. Mayroon tayong binibigay na allowance. Kaya if we need the item in say third quarter dapat nandiyan na yung item edi second quarter pasok na siya alam na natin na mag-uumpisa na dapat yung actual procurement before the quarter indicated of the uh, actual use okay ito ang importante dito ito yung sagot na uh, doing it or uh, ensuring that as we need the item, it's available. Hindi yung kung kailan kailangan, sa kalang tayo nagsasabi. And it now will result to some problems in the agency. Okay? And another question, how do we source it? Paano natin siya ipoprocure? Available kaya siya locally or internationally pa siya available? In which case, mas matagal yan. Kaya all the more, we need to do an early procurement planning. Kung locally naman, well and good. Siguro the next question now would be, anong modality ang pinaka-appropriate for us to be able to procure? Again, these are the basic questions that we need to ask so that ito yung mga objectives na we need to ensure ma-achieve natin. 
schedule in advance. So kung kailangan i-bidding yan, all the more. Kasi alam natin, as will be discussed in the next few days, that the earliest procurement when we do bidding for goods is 26 calendar days, for infra 28 calendar days, and the maximum is even longer than that. Will involve at least a maximum of three months. Kung walang delay yan, see? Kung walang delay, assuming talaga maganda yung pagkaplano natin, na avoid yung delays, na avoid yung failure of bidding, yan. So scheduling in advance is very important, particularly, alam naman natin, kayo na mga members ng BAC, it's not your, your, your role in the LGU or your functions, it's not purely on BAC matters, correct? You were not hired to be a member of the BAC. You were hired as department heads, as supervising department heads, and you have deliverables. You have inherent duties and responsibilities, correct? But because you possess some quality traits that uh, your hope see in you, you were given the trust and confidence to be a member of the box. So here you are doing additional responsibilities. So dapat talaga tutulungan din kayo ng lahat ng mga end user units by way of ensuring na maaga-aga yung plano ng lahat, lahat ng key players, lahat ng end users, so that kayo as back will have enough lead, leeway, enough lead time to also do your function as the procurement arm of the agency. Copy? And including the back sec, although yung back sec natin, as discussed yesterday, could be ad hoc, could also be organic. So kung ad hoc, add on again the responsibility yan. So dapat may hindi tayo minamadali. Okay? Number two, dapat yung procurement natin in the government should always be uh, our overall goal should always be to do things right, to do the right things and do it right. That is what we mean by being effective and at the same time, efficient. We might just be effective or efficient and not effective. So it should be both. Doing the right things and doing it right. Kapi, that is what we mean by that. And observing the operational, uh, the value for money concept, that, uh, that this is what we mean by the reasonable cost to the government. When, it is, when the government can only pay 100 for an item, why pay more than that? Okay, that's the value for money concept. For as long as quality aspect also is not sacrificed. And another important objective for a good procurement planning that will result to a successful procurement undertaking is we will be precluded from doing shortcut, okay? Because yun, sana wala na kasi kowabol yan. The worst is ombudsmanable also. Okay? Delikado tayo sa ombudsman yan. If we, circum we circumvent procurement rules simply because wala na tayong oras. Ayan, di ba? Sasabihin, kasi bukas na yan, kasi next week na yan. E ano na tayo na lang, mag-shopping na lang or mag-SVP na lang, mag-emergency na lang. Parang ganun agad ang ang mindset ng mga tao, lalo na pag, uh, yun na nga, it's a result of a poor procurement planning or no planning at all. Nagiging reactive tayo rather than proactive. Okay? And we should not be tolerating such practices. Okay. So, as earlier discussed, until the present, ito yung mga challenges natin hindi pa tayo masyado nagbibigay ng panahon para mag-conduct ng proper market study or proper uh, market research. Parang mabigat yung word na research to some kasi parang masyadong ano, technical, di ba? <laughs> uh, it need not be that very technical na nagre-research ka talaga. So gawin, use na lang natin yung 
study or uh, para hindi naman siya masyadong intimidating, we can use the word pre-canvas. Okay, di ba? I-check natin sa market by making use of a request for quotation. Pero hindi pa siya totoong request for quotation. Pre-canvas nga lang. Diba? Just checking. Sino-sino nga ba yung mayroon computers? Okay, alam na natin ilan ang mayroon sa market. And then, ano kaya yung mga model na available ngayon? Anong mga brand kaya available ngayon? Then you get the specs. You get copies of all their, probably all their leaflets, materials available as an input for us to do the further analysis processing of the data when we come back to the office. Okay? So hingi ka lang. We can say, ma'am, hindi kami makagawa ngayon kasi may pandemic. I don't buy that reason, that uh, explanation. As usual, I would tell my staff, don't give me excuses, give me a solution. Okay? Ganon dapat tayo. Hindi tayo maghanap ng mga rason, alibi for us not to do things, but rather, what else can we do? O kung may, kung may ano, hindi tayo pwedeng lumabas, wala na bang ibang paraan? Mayroon pa. We can call on them by phone. We can use uh, this online platform. Marami, di ba? Marami sa ano, yung mga online stores. Uh, as our initial reference for some information. That's not, of course, enough. We add on. That's why we process the information. Okay? When we say cost-benefit analysis naman, if we are faced with a situation where, for example, you still have vehicles, you still have existing computers, anong gagawin natin dito sa mga luma na mga sasakyan or equipments? Puno na yung bodega, puno na yung uh, motor pool. Ano kaya? I-upgrade na lang natin to. Hindi na tayo bibili ng bago. Or bili tayo ng bago. I-ano na lang natin to. I-transfer uh, without cost. So there will be no added cost for its repair. Kasi hindi na siya economical sa agency. Yun ang mga question when we do CBA. Okay? Which is more beneficial to the agency? You buy a new one. Medyo costly siya. At the same time naman, we can use it for a period of time. Matagal-tagal naman ang gamitan dyan. At madali tayo makakonect sa internet, hindi yung matagal yung ikot loading kasi nagsatsaga tayo sa mga old model, yung mga luma. And under the new normal, marami na ngayon ang gumagamit ng internet. Kaya competitive na rin itong mga service providers ngayon to level up also. At the same time tayo, as users of this technology, we also level up our infra uh, facilities, our hardwares. Okay? So yun. What we mean by a market study. So, dapat wala ng lack of or insufficient na mangyayari in the next few years. Dapat lahat ng end user units ngayon, dito sa basic course uh, for this week, wala tayong thorough discussion on ABC costing, determination of cost, and also the writing of tech specs, LGUs can go up to the second level later on after you graduate your basic course. Pag pumasa kayo dito sa basic course na to until Friday, you can qualify to attend to the second level where magkakaroon ng more detailed discussion. Magle-level up tayo sa pag-provide ng intervention along this line kasi nga medyo kulang pa siya. Okay, number two, yung pag-prepare and fill up ng mga PPMPs natin. Again, usually, instead na ideally pini-prepare siya early on before the budget is, is approved kasi nga attachment dapat siya sa mga agency proposal, ang nangyayari, nagiging huli ang PPMP nagiging ano na siya, based on the levels approved. So oftentimes, as indicated in here, the PPMP is a product after. Ano kaya ang pwedeng mabili sa nasa budget? Which is not the ideal setup. Rather, again, as I've said, kung susundin natin yung 
quadrant 1 and 2 that I showed earlier, as we plan, as indicated in the PPMP, yun ang basis for the uh, uh, asking for the levels of the budgetary requirements in terms of peso terms. So yun ang ideal. That is kung nagagawa ng maaga ng mga end user units yung mga PPMPs. Okay? So, uh, is this happening often? Maybe yes, particularly at the LGU level and at times at NGA level na hindi decentralized ang pagpaplano nila at ang pagbabudget. Kung baga, yung central office lang nila ang gagawa ng budget nila and then once approved na at the national level, bibigyan na lang ng allocation itong mga regional levels or operating units. So this is still happens. This continues to be a challenge at, as we speak. Okay? Another is, uh, yun na nga, yung isa kanina, yung lack of, lack or limited training or experience in crafting TORs. Totoo yan. Even ako, I can say, hindi ako, I cannot write a text specs for a computer. I can use a computer. I can prepare my PowerPoint. I can I can use other. Uh, uh, I can I can make use of the computer writing correspondence. But when it bugs down, I have to call a friend, <laughs> call a lifeline, maximize yung uh, ano natin uh, uh, identification of our IT experts. This can be done. Wag tayong mag-pretend na alam natin kung hindi naman natin alam pa. If we still need to be trained, so be it. Okay? Submit yourself to that training later on. In the meantime, we seek the help of TWGs. If they are available within the agency, we call this the IT people, experts, uh, computer literates people in the agency, or even outside the LGU, pwede pa rin tayo magpatulong in crafting the technical specifications. Lalo na, medyo mas hindi mag mahirap itong tech specs for goods kasi madali natin ito makapagtanong, gawa, uh, research, mas mabigat na challenge yung sa mga infrastructure. Yung paggawa ng program of work, design, DED and all, mas ano yan, mas challenging yan. However, LGUs, mayroon gayong ano, uh, anong tawag nito? Uh, engineering office where for sure mayroon kayong mga engineers na has the expertise. Assuming hindi pa rin enough yun, you can go to higher level LGUs sa province for some assistance or this time sa regional office or district office of the DPWH, okay? Kung, kung kailangan. So, sana itong mga effects sa mga challenges that we are encountering will already be minimized. Yung mga failure of bidding because I still see that as failure also in providing basic services. Remember again, LGU level kayo, you are the frontliners. So kung may failure of bidding, failure of your LGU to provide the basic services to the people. Kung may delay in procurement, delay din tayo sa pagbigay ng basic services. Okay? And the worst is we are able to spend more than what is expected, than what it should be. And ang mas mabigat dito, Mananagot tayo. We can be made accountable for an effective, ineffective procurement processes. Again, remember the end does not justify the means. Okay? I always remind my, my audience on that. Kadalasan kasi, minamadali, nasa shortcut, ano yung sabi? Nandyan naman ang item, di naman yan ninakaw. Wala naman ghost project. Wala naman ghost delivery, ma'am. So siguro naman, papasa ito sa COA. Ayan, ang mga common, uh, anong tawag nito? Uh, reasoning ng mga 
uh, agencies na medyo nakagawa ng maling pamamaraan. Okay, again, remember, the end does not justify the means. Maski nandyan yan, nakabili ka nga, pero mali naman yung procedure, mali naman yung process, mali pa rin siya. And yun ang i-strive natin, i-improve in the next year. Kasi every year, the government plans, budgets, and procure. Every year yan. Okay? So let's strive to improve our compliance every year. Okay? So what is, again, the... the kasi in any government agency, ganito yun. Nakikita natin, ano, kadami ninyo, kay players nakita natin kanina. And most of the time, these people has their own small, small, small cubicles. They have their own small world, small republic of the Philippines. Parang they, don't, they exist on their own. They operate on silos. That should not be the case. Okay? There should be a better management of all these small procurement processes happening one after the other or simultaneously happening. So there should be therefore key people, one or two maybe, that are tasked to manage the entire procurement processes. That is what I mean by procurement management. That is what we mean by better procurement management na yung mga questions, what, how, why, who, gets to understand at the same level of perspective. Okay? Seamless. Seamless. When we say seamless, anong ibig sabihin dyan? We see, we see bridges. We see connections. We don't see walls dividing each other, dividing the key players, isolating key players from each other. Pero ano yung reality on the ground, lalo na sa LGUs natin? Bato-bato sa langit, ang tamaan, huwag kayo masyadong magalit. Escape ka na lang kung natatamaan kayo. <laughs> This is my general observation. Being in government for 40 years, kasi ano na ako, golden years na ako, ah, no, senior citizen na ako, I started as young as 21 years old. And nasa 60 na ako. I started in 1981. Nasa 2021 na tayo. Magiging 41 years na pala ako in government. See? Full time in government for 41 years. And two years outside DBM. So 39 years in DBM. And with that rich, vast experience over time. Ano yung mga nakita ko? And which is still present until until now. Yun na nga. We tend to operate on our own. We have a small republic on our own. Uh, they, we don't, even local finance committee members at the LGU level hardly see each other eye to eye. They don't frequently discuss. They don't frequently meet. Paisa-isa silang nagsasubmit ng mga report sa mayor, sa governor. Anong nangyayari? the governor will not even bother take a look at their submission. So instead, kung mayroong isang magsabi ng information na medyo kapanipaniwala, doon nakikinig si governor, doon nakikinig si mayor. Ano ang lesson dyan? If these key players work as a team, kayo, kayo, yung mga BAC, secretariat, and user unit, budget officer, planning officer, You work as a team and you submit recommendations to the local chief executive as the whole. Yung BAC, work as a team. Kasi nga, committee kayo, di ba? It's a collegial body. So, there will be no reason for the head of the procuring entity not to listen and not to accede to your recommendations. That is always my, my, ano, my advice. But if pa isa isa kayo at different version, ito ang mangyayari. Wala wala sa inyo paniniwalaan at magtatagal ang decision making kasi nga hindi kayo nakakapagbigay ng timely collective uh, recommendations. Okay? So the golden circle is a reminder to us na in every organization, 
mayroon tayong questions that have to be answered. Uh, questions starting with why, ano yung purpose, ano yung objective, ano yung goal. Ano yung my questions to be answered starting with how and starting with what. And the basic question na wala dito, who? Who ang gagawa? Okay? So yan. Very important yan. Okay. Moving on. Let us now operationalize. Uh, Ma'am? Uh, Ma'am, yes. Ma'am, let's have our, ano muna po, our knowledge uh, check po. Ah, okay. Sige. Okay. So, ma'am, na-feel na-feel ko si ma'am. My God. Malayo mo pa po tayo sa ating uh, last presentation. Pero yung discussion po ni ma'am, no, very ano, detailed the way she explained. So, and her emotion po, nakakaano talaga. So, with that, ma'am, ikakat ko muna po, ha? So, let's okay, start okay, our sure. uh, knowledge check po. So, we will, we will be flashing a series of knowledge check questions. Through the Zoom poll features for us. All we have to do is choose the appropriate answers in the pop-up poll that shall be flashed in our screen. So for our first question, procurement planning is the process of identifying which project needs can be best met by procuring products and services within the project organization. Again, Procurement planning is the process of identifying which project needs can be best met by procuring products and services within the project organization. So is it A, true or B, false? Okay, so while waiting for the, for the result of our poll question, we would like to also acknowledge our Facebook Live viewers po. Good morning and welcome to our day two of batch three of online training. Again, you may also participate po by dropping your answer in the comment sections. Okay, so I think ma'am, we, we have reached the, the majority po ng sagot sa ating poll question. So the answer is A true. Yay, correct. So let us see po if this uh, indeed the correct answer ma'am. Yes. Okay. So with that, Thank you, Ma'am Aini. So let's proceed po for our next uh, slide. Thank you po. Okay. Do I need to speed up, Jo? Uh, okay naman po, Ma'am. Tama naman po. Okay lang po. Sakto okay, okay, lang po see. tayo. Thank you. Okay. So we are now into how shall we operationalize uh, when we say procurement planning has to be harmonized with the budget process or how do we link these two important processes. Now, these are the key guideposts, okay? Uh, there are provisions in section 7.1 of our IRR that reminds us, well, always that, that should be in our hearts and minds. Remember, these are mandatory provisions because the keywords used here, shall. Hindi ito may, ha? remember that. So all procurement shall be within the approved budget of the procuring entity and take note of the words used in the IRR meticulously, judiciously. So tama talaga yung definition kanina sa procurement, di ba? A process of selection and the process is not that cannot just be easily done because it requires a meticulous. <laughs> Napaka meticuloso pala ng proseso. Of course, depending on circumstances surrounding us. We cannot afford to be meticulous kung emergency na. Common sense naman, di ba? Kung mayroon ng calamity happening, then these are already set aside as a required processes. In other words, pwede na ito magawa later on to justify the immediate procurement. But uh, having said that, kung under the normal business course, no, under the normal situation, these are this should be observed by all agencies. So, meticulously, we are referring to answering those basic questions. Judiciously, we are referring to uh, consciously mindful of the limitations of the agency. We can be ambitious, yes. Wala naman, wala naman nakukulong sa pagiging masyadong ambisyoso natin. But, 
maging practical pa rin tayo as we plan. Otherwise, we will end up uh, being ano, uh, dissatisfied. Kasi later on, yung performance ng LGU will be based on your plans. Yung pag-assess sa actual performance ng LGU will be based on how you, prove, you, you set your direction. And kung alam naman natin na mahirapan tayo, then be more realistic and be practical with the limitations that you face. Okay? So, another reminder, we should always be consistent with government fiscal discipline measures. Every now and then, there are reforms along public financial management, along budget reforms. And we have to be consistent with that. Example of this, ngayon, uh, nagta-transition ang national government into the annual cash base. Kasama ba ang LGUs dito? Yes. As far as uh, funds that LGUs receive from the national government units, uh, from the national government agencies. However, when it comes to local funds, the IRA, which will now become your NTA in 2022, and your locally generated resources, hindi pa rin siya, wala pa rin siyang expiration date. So that is what we mean by kung sinasabi na sa national government na yung validity period of the funds that will be downloaded to LGUs for use to implement projects are coming from the national government like LGSF. Mayroon yan two-year validity period. So hindi kayo pwedeng maglampas ng two-year period na hindi nyo gagamitin yung pera. Otherwise, babalik at babalik yan sa national government. So what an opportunity lost. I know our LGUs need support from national government in terms of additional funding. So mindful tayo dapat sa ganon na mag -e expire and, and, and at times you receive checks during the year. LGUs receive checks from BOH for HFEP. You receive check from DA for projects to be implemented along agriculture from DOLE. So ano yung expiration date ng mga check-in na to, ng mga pera na to within the year? Kasi annual cash base na tayo. Uh, except kung na-extend yung validity period ng Congress. Okay? So for 2020, na-extend hanggang this year. So okay tayo sa 2020 na hindi nagamit. Valid pa siya until this year. Pero yung 2021 funds natin, assuming nakareceive pa kayo ngayon ng mga checky coming from national agencies, wala pa pong extension ng validity for 2021. So meaning, valid for utilization yan, for obligation and disbursement until December 31, 2021. Okay? So importante alam ninyo itong mga fiscal discipline measures para napuproject ninyo nakakalibrate ninyo ang procurement undertaking. Otherwise, hindi nyo alam, wala na pala yung pera. Okay? Nag-expire na pala sa kalang kayo nakapag-recommend award. Ay wala na palang basis for the award. So sasabihin ni mayor, ni governor, kung nakapag-award siya, uh, baka hindi rin siya na-update ng budget officer or ng treasurer, mag award Eh di malaking problem yan na award and then magi implement only to find out wala na pala kasi nag-expire na pala okay so be mindful of this the app also remember uh, no amount of planning can can help us as well uh, predict some of the uh, events that may unfold during the budget year so we can always provide for Foreseeable emergencies. Ano itong example ng foreseeable emergencies? May happen. We can foresee na it will happen. Di lang natin alam kailan. Example, computers. Posibleng mava-virus yan. Magbabug down yan. Di lang natin alam kailan. Uh, aircon. Alam natin yan bago. Uh, may freon. But alam ba natin kung kailan mauubusan? Masisira, spare parts ng mga vehicles. So yun, consider including that. So sino ang magdedetermine nito? The end user units, of course, guided by historical data. 
Kaya nga magkakaroon kayo dapat ng mga CBA analysis, cost benefit analysis for those na medyo luma na in the inventory. Baka naman malaki na ang nagagastos natin dito. Okay? So it will now be more uh, expensive, costly sa agency for maintaining in maintaining old fleet of vehicles. So okay, so that's part of the uh, procurement planning. And when we say need, ano yung kailangan lang natin i-consider in our uh, procurement planning? What are the other elements when we say, ano kaya ang ibig sabihin ng need? Remember, dapat we have a way, we should have a way to distinguish that from wants. At times kasi, we could be tempted to identify something that may not anymore fall within the definition of need. Rather, ano na siya, parang arti na siya, hindi naman siya kailangan, pero parang kailangan ko, Kailangan ko. Pero sige nga, i-check nga natin. Ano yung how do we define a need? If that item can be considered as crucial, when we say crucial, without which, hindi tatakbo yung gobyerno. Wala kang magagawa talaga without which. Hindi ka na makaka-function. Yan, if for, for efficient discharge of governmental functions, which are required on a day-to-day -day operations. So ano yung mga day-to-day -day na kailangan nandyan sa opisina para makapag-opisina tayo, makapagtrabaho tayo? Yan, office supplies. Kasi susulat ka, kailangan mo ng band paper. mag encode ka, kailangan mo ng computer. These are crucial. Huwag na kayong bumalik sa makinilya. Although some of our agencies, meron pa tayong mga typewriters, di ba? In the event, nagbabrown out. Na ano pa rin, nakakapag-function pa rin tayo. But, uh, and remember also, another key guidepost is it should be within the mandate. It should be contributory, directly contributory to the performance of the mandate of the procuring entity. So, question could arise na yung need ni agriculture may not be the need of the social welfare. Very correct. Yung need ni health may not be the need of the other end user units. Again, very correct because they have different mandates. Kapi? We, they may have common needs but they may also have different needs. So dyan papasok ang pag-prioritize of the items to be procured. So guided again with item uh, section 7.2 and 7.1 as I've mentioned earlier. Do you know that? Mayroon akong trivia. <laughs> Do you know that prior to 2009 IRR? Kasi di ba in your lecture yesterday, ilang IRR na tayo sa GPPBTSO? Nakatatlo na tayo ng IRR. From the very beginning, IRR does A, overtaken in 2009 by the uh, amendment of another IRR to amend IRR does A and incorporate uh, supposedly the IRR does B na hindi na nakalabas. Okay, na harmonized na yung funded uh, internationally sa 2009 IRR. And dito pumasok itong mga provisions of Section 7.1 and 7.2. So meaning, prior to 2009, pinakamalaking challenge sa government dati yung paglink ng procurement planning sa budget process. Kasi at that time, may mga instances na some agencies were not able to link to the point na nakapag-procure, nakabili, may sumisingil kasi na-deliver, may sumisingil na supplier only to find out, ay wala pala kaming budget for that particular item. My goodness. <laughs> Anong nangyayari? Umiiyak yung mga sellers, suppliers, kasi sinasabihan sila, pasensya, maghahanap pa kami ng pera, gagawa pa kami ng supplemental budget. So see? So to correct that, to correct this 
instances na nangyari between 2003 to 2009. Pagdating ng amendment in 2009, binigyan na ngayon ng emphasis yung role ni budget officer sa lahat ng agencies na dapat dadaan sa kanya yung procurement planning process para ma-insure na maliling talaga ang mga PPMPs ang APPs sa budget of the agency. Okay? So ngayon, 7.2, ito na. No procurement shall be undertaken unless it is in accordance with the approved annual procurement plan. Okay? And the approval of the APP is bestowed with the head of the procuring entity or the designated second drunking official. Basta not a member of the BAC, yung second drunking official. Okay, this is now to ensure again na walang procurement na mangyayari na hindi mababayaran ng government agency concern. Copy? So that hindi na tayo mababranded na matagal magbayad ang gobyerno. Okay, and we will slowly but surely earn the trust again of the Uh, bidders of the business community. Now, to further illustrate the link of procurement planning to the budget process, particularly, kasi alam natin ang budget process is composed of several phases. Okay? Sige nga, review nga natin, budgeting 101 sa LGU, kasi not all naman of our Uh, involved in procurement are in the budget or are familiar with the budget process. So for a better understanding, ano yung ano? Ano yung, what are the five phases of the budget process at the local level? Sa local mayroon tayong lima, sa national mayroon tayong five phases. Ito yung pagkaiba ng national budget process with the local budget process. Sige nga, sino yung sasagot sa chat box? Hindi ko lang mababasa kasi hindi ko na open yung chat box. Ayan. Na-open ko na. Sige. Anyone who can answer? Ilan ang faces sa budget process natin sa lokal? Before I proceed discussing this slide now, para at least alam natin where to start. This is always my mode of, uh, uh, okay, there's an answer already from LGU uh, Picong. Is this LGU Picong? Three steps. Sorry. Uh, sino itong isa? LGU Aluginsan. Five. May nag-answer ng five. May nag-answer yes. May nag-answer ng apat. Okay, may Katmon Cebu. Wow, yung mga kasamahan ko ito dati when I was in Region 7. Nice to see you. May Region 8 ba na participants? Okay, LGU Isabel. Isabel Leite ba ito? Mali pa naman yung sagot, sir. <laughs> Hindi lang tatlo ang steps of the budget process sa lokal. Si Bukatmon answered five, correct. Okay, so the correct answer po is we have five phases of the budget process at the LGU level. Okay? Sa so national so apat. Pero pwede na sa LGU. Okay, mayroon na ka-on na na microphone. May nagdi-discuss. <laughs> so siguro na-excite sila doon sa question ko. So anyway, So, in the national, we have five. Budget prep, budget authorization, budget execution, budget accountability. Sa local, the same, may dagdag na isa. Ano yung dagdag na isa sa local na wala sa national? Ano yung isa na dagdag? Sige nga. Sino yung makakasagot? So the same apat sa local, pattern sa national, except, ayan, nadagdagan tayo ng budget review phase. Very good. Si Gina of 
Katmon, Cebu, LGU Katmon. Nakinig ito si Gina sa mga lectures ko dati dyan sa Cebu. <laughs> okay? So, may budget review. Kasi sa national, yung budget review naman is ginagawa ng various agencies. Concern. At saka sa DBM na office. At the LGU level, ang gumagawa ng budget review is a higher level LGU and the BBM for provinces, highly urbanized cities, and independent component cities. Correct? So, knowing that, having said that, anong particular a step of the budget process sa local na kasing ang procurement planning? Anong particular phase of the budget process na kasing ang procurement planning? The answer is dito. Particularly the budget preparation phase. Tapi dito uh, mukhang nawala dito yung mga text. Ito yung mga strategies doon sa four quadrants. Okay, bakit nawala dito pala, Joe? Wala dito yung mga description of what are to be done by the end user. So sige, uh, improve ito sa next for the next batch. Uh, yung, anyway, yung nandito are those that are in the, ito. Imagine nyo na lang ha. Ito yung mga nandito sa, <clears throat> dito. Ito yung mga naka-check, ito yung mga uh, specific activity to be done in the identification of the needs. Ito yung ita-transfer natin doon kanina sa blanko na mga boxes, okay? Ito yung mga specific activities sa assessment, ito din dito sa procurement and doon sa implementation, but more dito sa first two. So i-copy natin yan in the... Uh, imagine ito yung mga nakalagay dito sa mga boxes. Okay? Yan. Uh, mayroon pala dito mas madali. Okay. Sige. So, uh, meaning, for quadrant 1 and 2, the identification process and the assessment process are done by these key players. Ito na yung sagot doon sa who will do it, end user units, Anong gagawin nila? Ano yung gagawin nila? Ito. Who will do it? The end user units. Sa assessment. O sa identification. The next is, nagawa na nila. May PPMP na tayo. Forward to second quadrant. What will be done sa PPMP? It will be assessed. What are the strategies or actions to be done in the assessment? Ito yon Sagot. Who will do this? Ito yung mga sagot sa answer. Ito yung mga sagot sa question, I mean. Who will do the assessment? The budget officer, the box sec, the box, and the HOPE will finally approve. So in other words, sila yung tutulong kay HOPE to do the assessment. Ang question na crucial dito when we want to think is when. When gagawin nila ng key players itong nasa loob? The answers are ito na, during budget preparation phase. So in a way, we are now able to link what are to be done and when to do it and who are doing it. Everybody aware na dapat gagawin natin ito during budget preparation phase. Another question will be, what month? Yun, pababa tayo sa detalye, no? What month? Kasi ang budget prep phase runs, covers several months. Anong particular months sa budget preparation phase? Usually, lumalabas ang budget call issued by DBM, particularly what month of the year. Sa national government, maaga-aga ang budget call na lalabas as early as January. Kaya nag-uumpisa ang budget uh, preparation or identification ng needs as early as January or even earlier than that. Sa local, even if usually lumalabas ang budget call sometime May. Particularly for budget year 2022, kailan lumabas yung budget call ng DBM? Where we issued your indicative 
in TA, kailan lumabas? Sometime May. Pero it doesn't mean may kayo mag-uumpisa sa procurement planning. Okay, kaya I did not uh, change, we did not change the month here to May because we want to emphasize na procurement planning and budget preparation can even can start even prior to the issuance of the budget call. Okay? Again, I repeat. Procurement planning and budget preparation phase at the level of the LGUs can start even prior to the issuance of the budget call so that we have enough lead time in doing the market study, in doing the answering those questions that were raised earlier. Yung pinakita ko kanina na mga basic questions. Okay? So that pagdating ng budget call, mas mabilis na tayo makapag-submit ng PPMP, not just for compliance, but the substance in itself is already a product of a well thought of, well done procurement planning. Kapi? Kaya maaga-aga dito nakalagay January. And we also know that the budget preparation phase sa LGU level ends by sometime October. Why October? Bakit October? Ideally, again, the local governments code requires all our local chief executives to submit their proposed budget to their sanggunian not later than October 16. So ito yung ideal again. However, some LGUs are not able to submit October. Okay lang. Okay lang. Nag, yung, nag, ano pa yan? Uh, Nag-ugo ba yan? Pakimute yung microphone, sir. Uh, some LGUs, as I've said, nag-go beyond October. Inaabutan ng November. Mayroon naman earlier than October. So, this could be a fluid date. Pwede yan magbago. Pero again, let's stick to the ideal in the budget calendar. As contained in the budget call and in the budget operations manual for LGUs or the BOM. Okay? And after the submission, ano yung sinasubmit ni Mayor sa Sanggunian by October? Ano yung equivalent sa National Expenditure Program sa local level? Kung si Presidente was able to submit the NEP to Congress last August 23, to be exact, for the budget in the national government, ano yung equivalent sa local government unit nito? Ano yung equivalent document? Local Expenditure Program or the LEP. Sinasabit ng governor or mayor to the sanggunian again on time, October 16, or the actual date of your submission. So that triggers by the time makasubmit si governor or mayor, that day starts the budget authorization phase. Okay? Kaya magkocross na tayo from budget prep to budget authorization. In here, pwede tayo makapaggawa na ng while waiting. Kasi somehow, yung back dito, ordinarily, prior to the early procurement uh, activity, prior to the uh, procurement reform allowing EPA, nag-hibernate muna tayo dito, naghihintay tayo kung ano yung ma-approve na level sa kapat tayo pumapasok, sa kapat tayo nag -e execute come January pag mag-approve na yung sanggunian ng APRO ordinance. ba? Diba? Sa kapat nagbibiding, that was before. Some LGUs are now doing early procurement activity. But still, some LGUs has yet to conduct, start adapting the early procurement as a norm, as a regular activity, which should be done dito sa budget authorization phase. Kapi? Pwede ba pala? Pwede pala kami sa LGU mag-EPA 
The answer is yes. Akala namin, ma'am, applicable lang yan sa national agency. Hindi po. Even the IRR already allows, the 2016 IRR allows LGUs to already start conducting early procurement. Kaya mayroon tayong uh, slides on that later on. Paano gagawin ang, pag, ang EPA? And remember again na uh, if these are being done by other LGUs, your LGU should have no reason not to do it. Okay? Benchmark with other LGUs who are doing it para mas ma-fast track ang pag-utilize natin ng LGU budget para every year as the LGU prepares your budget, every year you receive in TA. Every year you are supposed to implement projects. Talaga ba nauubos yung budget ng LGU every year to implement, to pay your service providers? Again, the answer is no. Sad to say. Hindi pa tayo ganun kabilis maggastos. Alam namin, marami kayong perang nakapark sa bangko. Marami kayong pera sa bangko. Yung karamihan dyan, continuing APRO na. What do we mean continuing APRO? Yung sa mga prior years na 20% development fund, prior years na 5% calamity fund, kasi nga hindi naman din pwede natin talaga magamit yung 30% quick response fund. I mean, yes, correct, 30% quick response fund kung wala talagang actual calamity. Okay lang yun, justified yun. But for 20% development fund, for infra projects of the LGU na nagiging continuing APRO, what does it mean? Mabagal tayong gumasto. Mabagal kasi tayo mag-procure. Copy? So ngayon, bibilisan natin ang procurement para mabilis din ang gastusan. Okay? So that is done again. Particularly yung mga infra na forbidding, you, that should now be done during budget authorization phase. Ang may iwan na lang dapat sa execution phase, yung mga procurement for foreseeable emergencies or yung talagang hindi pwede i-conduct through EPA. And ipapakita natin later on, ano-ano yon, Anong modality ng procurement ang hindi pwedeng i-conduct through early procurement activity? Okay? So, again, be reminded uh, of the need to synchronize the activities to be done with the budget calendar. Okay? So, moving on, let's now proceed. Are there no questions so far with this presentation? Ito, in all my mga lectures na in the lectures that I usually do, even for first-timers na nag attend ng training, they really appreciate this Philippine procurement paradigm presentation if properly and uh, elucidated, na discuss in detail. Isang discussion mo lang dito, although tatakbo siya ng mga 30 minutes or so, nakukompleto na yung understanding ng ordinary key player or even, uh, ano, hindi siya key player sa entire procurement. Then na naalalaman nila, ay hindi pala ganun kadali. Ay kailangan pala kami tumulong. <laughs> okay, particularly the end user units. Malaki pala ang role namin. Yan ang important realization na dapat mayroon na kayo as of now. Insights. Okay, hindi lang pala dapat pabayaan natin ang back. Ayan. So happy na ngayon ang back. Diba? Ma hindi na kayo magre-retire, magre-resign as members of back. Kasi marami na kayo palang katulong ngayon. Kasi ang tendency, yun na nga, maraming back tuloy ang na, na papagod kasi sila pa yung palaging na blame Akala kasi ng karamihan sa atin dyan, they are mag magicians. They can produce immediately what we need. They can circumvent the law and the rules. Kaya karamihan tuloy sa back, nagkakaproblema with COA. Also with ombudsman. And marami na tayong statistics na kawawa naman okay? na nawawalan sila ng trabaho, na didismiss sila for some uh, omissions, some commissions na hindi naman sinasadya yung iba. Kung sinadya, then they deserve 
this uh, to be out of government kasi dapat hindi tayo nagva-violate. Pero kung hindi sinadya, doon ako naaawa naman. Mga errors of omission. Simply because hindi sila natulungan ng karamihan sa inyo dyan. Okay? So magtulungan tayo para yung mga back natin, magkaroon pa rin sila ng mga love life. Okay? Baka wala ng mga love life itong mga members ng back natin. Puro na lang procurement. Okay. And I would like at this juncture to really commend all of you procurement practitioners. You are the unsung heroes of the government. If only I need to inspire you to carry on the challenges. Okay? Carry on. Do not resign, particularly, especially if you are able to attend trainings. <laughs> Build up on your uh, competencies so that you are able to process and uh, make an informed decision or contribute to a well-informed decision-making as a collegial body. Okay? So let's move on to the basic principles that can help you guide as you conduct your procurement planning. Okay, kanina, parang na ano tayo, ano, ano bang ibig sabihin when we say need to conduct market study? Ito yun. Uh, gathering of information, financial and non-financial information, analyzing this information, and making use of your analysis to fill up your PPMP. That is another way of defining what is meant by market study. Because again, at the end of the day, ang bottom line natin, why there is procurement, is we have to satisfy. Diba yung arrow nag-end doon sa satisfaction? And the arrow started from the need. So dapat yung, uh, anong tawag nito? Uh, one of the principles ni, na, ni Stephen Covey in the in uh, the seven habits of a uh, of a uh, good leader, good manager, ano yon? Other than a uh, uh, need to sharpen our saw regularly, begin with the end in mind. Happy. Begin with the end in mind. <clears throat> ano yung end in mind? Ano yung end na gusto natin masagot? Ayan. Ano, paano natin masasatisfy yung need in other words? Happy? So, that, that, as simple as that. So, the process is yun na nga. <clears throat> you start with uh, identifying your desired outcome. Ito na nga. Begin with the end in mind. You identify yung requirement. You define your requirement. You develop your plan. Okay. As you identify your desired outcome, you also conduct yung, yung market study and gather information and analyze and put it or use it as an input to your plan. Okay. So you will notice na yung end in mind, yung arrow points or directs us to coming up with our development or with our procurement plan. At the end user unit level, that's your PPMP. At the whole of the agency level, that's your APP. Copy? So see, it has to start from somewhere. Hindi yung, wala dito yung copy, ha? Wala dito yung traditional natin ginagawa, copy-paste. Okay? That's the most easy way, pero para sa akin, yun ang pinaka napaka-stupido <laughs> na gagawin ng isang ahensya ang mag-copy-paste ng old, old, old PPMP. Sana walang gumagawa ng ganun. Okay. Ano yung advantages in doing uh, a market study? Okay, marami tayong nakikitang mga advantages. What's in it for the agency? More efficient in terms of making use of our precious time with our limited resources. Again, avoids conflict of interest. Okay, kasi marami possible talaga nagkakikreate ng conflict pag hindi very clear 
ang ating mga uh, pagkandak ng uh, procurement planning, it will also allow government to select the best offer, to choose the best offer. And the best offer as we define in, in RA9184 as discussed yesterday, the LCRB for goods and infra and the uh, rated highest rated HRRB for consulting. Okay, so there will be competition among bidders to offer the best to the government. We are able also to operationalize the principle on competitiveness. We are able to provide equal opportunities to all bidders that are eligible. And we are now walking the talk. If we say we need to be transparent, then let's do it. Let's apply. Let's uh, comply with the requirements for us to be transparent on top of posting the in the various uh, platforms, no? on top of the traditional posting requirements. So see? These are the benefits or advantages in doing procurement planning, conducting market study. And the result of this is find its way to our PPMP. Okay? This is now the end document that will say that we really did procurement planning and it will now be the basis of the end user unit to monitor uh, actual procurement undertaking. Now, remember, by the way, we can also, uh, uh, procurement PPMPs can also be considered as indicative and final. So if done during the procurement planning side, these are indicative PPMPs that find its way to the indicative APP as well. Copy. However, if your PPMP is already a product of an adjustment or modification based on the approved budget level, come the, after the APRO ordinance is approved, signed into law, signed by the local chief executive and therefore now is considered a legal basis, if we transform, if there are adjustments in the APP from indicative to final because of some reductions in the level of the APRO ordinance vis-a-vis -vis the budget proposal, then it follows na mag a din tayo ng mga PPMP. Okay? So yung final PPMP will now be the basis or reference in procurement monitoring, not the indicative PPMP. Okay, not the raw PPMP, but the final. Okay, so again, emphasis here in the bottom box that this should be done during budget prep. I already emphasized that earlier. And uh, as an attachment to support the budget proposal of the end user unit. So I already, I, we have already uh, advised the budget officers that when they help craft the budget call to be signed by the local chief executives, kasi based on the DBM budget call, uh, LGUs are also required to issue the budget call to be signed by the mayor this time and governor this time. In that local budget call, nakalagay na talaga siya. Yung requisite attachment to the budget proposal of each department is the PPMP. Okay, and hopefully the compliance again will now be more substan substantial. Sub compliance, meaning the substance of the PPMP is a product now of a thorough procurement planning. Okay, so much for that. So these are the column. Alam ko, familiar na kayo dito sa mga column headings. And may mga instructions naman din in filling up the forms. Okay, this is how it looks like. And depende ko ano yung uh, funding source. Kung LGU ito, hindi ito charged to GAA. This is 
This form is applicable sa National Government Agency charged to General Appropriations Act. So uh, for the agents, for the LGU, you can use this. You can change, edit the GAA charged to the general fund of the LGU or charged to a trust fund or charged to uh, a downloaded funds from a particular uh, agency of the national government, di ba? Kasi marami kayong possible funding source or charge sa LGSF as the case may be. Sa ngayon, mayroon na pa rin kayong AM, assistance to municipalities, assistance to cities. Yung, uh, kung province naman, mayroon din kayo yung, ano, yung uh, anong tawag nito? Matching grant yung sa for your infrastructure projects. Ayan, so you label it accordingly depending on your funding source. Okay? And it has to be signed by the end user unit. Because remember, this is a PPMP. Okay, so so much for that. Let's go. And remember, for the uh, answer to the question, when? Ang answer to that will be specific months. Kasi ang PPMP natin, the column headings for the milestone or schedule is on a monthly basis. But for the APP, quarterly na po siya. Hindi na siya monthly. So kung nakalagay sa April, May, June, it will now be consolidated into the second quarter in the APP. Kapi? Pero for the first few columns, similar pa rin ito sa columns of the APP. Now, emphasis dito sa code columns. Itong code, this is to connect your AIP codes ito. Ito yung mga AIP reference code. Para again, we are connecting, linking our procurement planning with the AIP kasi ang budget is linked to the AIP. And since we are saying that our procurement plan has to be linked with the budget, then it requires as well na alam, ng, alam natin saan ito sa AIP na mga bibilhin natin for us to implement a particular project. Saan papasok na specific PPA doon sa AIP? Kapi, ito yung importance or a meaning ng reference code dito sa first column. Okay, so moving on. Uh, some slides more, additional slides to help us uh, define what do we mean by need. Mayroon na tayo kanina, di ba? So core function of the end user unit, remember? Hindi yung buong ahensya ha? Kasi yung buong LGU, you are a mini republic of the Philippines, baya. Marami kayong offices dyan, just like the national government. So focus lang kayo doon sa particular function of your own department. So kung agriculture yan, yun lang ang reference mo sa pag-identify mo ng need. Including administrative cost, including training cost. Okay? Yun ang sinasabi natin. May mga, may mga over, uh, anong tawag, oversight cost na pwede pa rin ninyo ipasok doon sa end user unit requirement. So okay, based on the goals, the major final outputs, and again, historical data. So usually, accountants of the LGU can provide information as to the actual that have been spent by the particular end user unit on certain foreseeable contingencies. Example, yung mga due to wear and tear of your existing facilities. So pwede natin yan makahingi sa accounting office. Or you can also keep track uh, of the data at your own office. Okay? Another is the procuring entities strategic plans. O ngayon, alam nyo na na magkakaroon kayo ng additional devolved functions. So i-consider na ninyo in crafting your need for 2022 for seeing na may dagdag kayong responsibility na gagawin based on the devolution transition plan that are being prepared right now by your LGUs. Kapi? 
So this is again, being realistic with what's happening around you, around the LGU, within the LGU. And be mindful as well as to the current supply inventory. Uh, I would not recommend na saka kayo bibili o i-include ninyo sa plano magpapabili kayo kung wala na talagang laman yung supply room ninyo. No. Allowed pa rin tayo mag-maintain ng one quarter or one one quarter or one month requirement as allowed by COA. And depending also on the size of your supply room. Copy? So nowadays, uh, dahil may pandemic na tayo, some of our much needed supplies like PPEs, face masks, alcohol, and all, we need to keep track, maintain some level of inventory. Kasi while we are already into the 18th month of this pandemic, of this state of calamity, yung pag-procure natin dapat nakaplano na rin. Dapat minimize na yung pag-procure using emergency procurement. Even if we are still under state of calamity. Bakit? Why do I say that? Maski state of calamity pa tayo, di ba? Na-extend ni President until next year. September 2022 ang state of calamity natin. That alone, that alone, na statement of calamity should not be a sole basis for the LGU to procure using the modality under NEGO procurement na emergency procurement. Okay? Because unless, again, the element or the, the element, the sense of urgency can be established, there's imminent danger to life and property. Otherwise, pag wala, it can wait kasi mayroon ka naman stuck already. Hindi naman ito first time. Nabibili ang LGU ng mga face mask. Nabibili kayo ng mga needed PPEs. So plan what you need while we still have some stocks in the inventory para yung procurement natin will be competitive at hindi magre-resort sa unnecessary uh, alternative mode of procurement. Kapi, uh, I'm sure you have another discussion on that. The discussion on the alternative modes of procurement. Now, also consider other maintenance and operating needs. Yung sinasabi ko kanina. No? Na hindi lang yung acquisition cost ang ifa-factor in natin, but rather other uh, freight cost, delivery cost, installation cost, yung regular wear and tear for the item procured to continue its functionality. Okay, so th those are added uh, tips for you to identify what are really needs. Now, also, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Are we allowed to conduct early procurement activity? Yes. Are we, ano yung reference natin when we say ABC for the contract? Approved, the ABC reflected in the APP shall be consistent with the APRO. Meaning, when we say ABC in the APP, it should be, it should match with what is in the APRO ordinance. As approved by the Sangunian and signed by the local chief executive. Okay? As far as LGU. As far as G, in GA, yung GAA naman ang reference natin. So, when it comes to the conduct of the EPA, wala pa tayong APRO ordinance there, di ba? But a proposal pa lang, which is called the Local Expenditure Program. So, yun ang reference in the conduct of the EPA. Kung execution phase na, ang reference naman natin is the APRO ordinance. Okay? Sige. So, knowledge check. Uh, back to you, Joe. Meron yata tayo ditong sasagutin na question. Yes, ma'am. Thank you po. So for a second knowledge check po, the question is who must consider the different cost components in determining ABC? So again, kind of uh, input your uh, answer po through our Zoom chat box or Zoom poll rather. ATWG, B back secretariat, C and user, D all of the above.
And may also remind po yung ating mga Zoom participants to please keep our, mi our microphones muted po throughout the entire session to maintain clarity during the lecture po. Okay, so yeah, let's uh, wait lang ma'am for, ano, for the final result, result po. Yes, okay. So as of now, ma'am, majority ng ating answered is letter C. But yeah, okay. may sumasagot pa rin po. Okay, very good. Okay, so majority answered letter C. A, B, C. And user po, ma'am. Uh, yes. Let's see po if this is indeed the correct answer po, ma'am Amy. Thank you po. Yes, the answer is correct. Okay, so now you realized your role as end user unit. Of course, kayo yung initial na mag identify niyan without prejudice sa review of the higher other key players, di ba? Uh, hindi naman ibig sabihin na yun na yung na-identify talaga na cost ng end user unit, na yun na yun, cast in stone na siya. Hindi naman. Kaya nga may assessment pa rin tayo sa level sa quadrant 2, di po ba? Uh, I-qualify ko lang din yun, uh, Joe. Kasi baka din pagdating ng panahon doon sa LGU mag, magkakaroon ng mga, ng mga debate o magkakaroon ng mga uh, discussions. Okay lang kung healthy discussions, hindi lang violent <laughs> discussions. Okay? Tama yan. End user unit ang mag-uumpisa yan, mag-conduct, mag-gather ng data as basis for the ABC determination to include all the cost component, but uh, that's an initial proposal based on the study done by the PPM, by the end user unit, as contained in the PPMP without prejudice to the assessment to be conducted at the second quadrant level. Happy? Hello? Hello, yes, Happy? Hello. Okay, very good. So, sige, let's move on. Gagaling ng participants natin. Yay! Talaga sure ako graduate kayo. Maski second day pa lang kayo. <laughs> Galing kasi na mga speakers. Ah, okay, thank you for that. You're inspiring me more, Joe. In behalf of the participants, thank you. So anyway, let's move on to the next slide. As you will see, uh, nag-uumpisa tayo from the smallest unit of the agency, from the end user units, in crafting the whole uh, of the agency plan. Ano yung mga talagang kailangan bilhin ng agency para tayo makagawa ng buong APP dito sa, dito sa end of the arrow, uh, it starts from, it starts somewhere. Kaya ngayon, I hope yung lahat ng end user units has realized that they play an important role in the entire procurement process. See, kayo ang umpisa, dyan din sa inyo ang determination kung successful or not, kung satisfied or not. See, ganun ka-crucial ang role natin. Okay, and again, emphasis, this will be done during budget preparation upon the issuance of the budget call. So, Dito na, yung uh, uusad na agad. Pag issue ng budget call, aakyat na yung PPMP, medyo a little, ano siguro, refinement, finalization na lang dito. Pero yung conduct ng market study, ginawa natin prior to the budget call issuance. Okay? Kasi nga, kung malate yung budget call, eh, di, magahabulan tayo. Diba? Ma ma ano na, madideprive na tayo ng, ng enough lead time to do our own uh, thorough procurement planning. So, sige. I will not reiterate what I already uh, discussed earlier, just to show you on, in another way. So, let's more discuss. Some of, some of the slides here are more focused na on helping our LGUs now identify or determine the approved budget for the contract. Yan ang meaning ng ABC, ha? I know you are very familiar with the Association of Barangay Captains <laughs> sa LGU level. Yan ang meaning, isang meaning ng ABC. Pero pagdating sa procurement, this 
refers to approved budget for the contract. So again, we can see this, yung source info natin dito, kung approved na yung budget is the upper ordinance. Pero para magkaroon tayo ng realistic na ABC, para pagdating ng approval ng budget, kung ano yung approve ng, ng sanggunian, actual na amount, makakabili tayo, talaga tayo sa kailangan natin bilhin na specifications. So yung ideal is that yung ABC will be based again, as I've said, from the conducted market study as your initial ball figure. So kung magkaroon ng idea kayo, magkano kaya yung cost ng computer ngayon? Ha? Yung ngayon, uh, ito yung mga model, ito yung mga brand, ito yung specs. Ah, nagko-cost pala siya ng mga 20,000. Example lang ha? for discussion purposes. But alam natin, at the back of our mind, hindsight, na hindi naman tayo ngayon bibili. May nagsabi kasi na in one training, ma'am kasi kung i-base namin sa, uh, nag-base naman siya sa ano, sa, sa anong tawag nito, in the uh, online web, website natin sa Phil Jeps, sa PS. Sabi niya, ma'am binis namin sa presyo sa PS, DBM, doon sa Phil Jeps website. At, Pagdating ng panahon, ma'am, hindi na kami nakabili kasi masyado naman siyang ano, mababa. So sabi ko, bakit yung price ba doon sa sa website, yun at yun din ang ang nilagay nyo as your ABC? Sabi niya, oo ma'am, as our reference. Sabi ko, ay may kulang kasi sa nagawa ninyo. Ball figure pa lang yun. You, that's just your take of point. You will add on. Ito yun. What will you add on? Yung market price, add on to the market price, what you saw, kung magkano, 20,000 example, inflation cost. And the cost of money related to the procurement timeline. Kasi alam naman natin na we will be buying this not tomorrow, not within the week, but next year. Diba? Common sense. Yun naman. At the other necessary cost component. Kaya we really encourage our LGUs that when you do your market study, kung items yan na madali naman ma-deliver, madaling ma-install, walang masyadong add-on na mga uh, cost components that needs to be factored in. But what about if you are buying a generator set? For example lang, ha, gen set. Or even computer. Yung computer ninyo, kailangan pa rin yan ikabit natin doon sa existing uh, facility ninyo, yung existing IT facility ninyo sa office. So may installation ka pa rin dyan, may testing ka pa rin dyan, may delivery cost ka pa rin dyan. But maybe not that much, maybe minimal lang yan, kung one or two. But what about kung ano ito, yung uh, say uh, genset or... Yung malaking anong tawag ito sa air conditioning unit na, na malalaki na magbubutas ka pa ng mga anong tawag nito ng uh, exhaust for the condenser to be installed outside. So may cost component na dapat ma-factor in other than the delivery cost. Ano yon So we are encouraging therefore na yung procurement project ninyo will be holistic or will capture all the cost component. So you will now be describing your procurement activity in the PPMP as not just procurement of generator set, but rather, ano yung pinaka-strategic na a product of a thought, well thought of na procurement planning. Kasi kung genset lang yan, paano yung delivery? Nako, mabigat pa naman yan. Ilang tao ang mag, uh, ano yan. Nako, at saka dapat ipapasok siya doon sa sa genset room or ano ba yan, tawag natin, dapat naka-enclose siya in a safe, uh, properly fenced na facility na hindi naman siya exposed, na hindi ma-expose sa hazards yung mga tao, di ba? O yung mga dumadaan. So ano yung pinakamagandang strategic uh, way of packaging na yung overall goal of the agency na pag pag ma-deliver yon magiging functional agad 
aandar agad, tatakbo agad yung opisina maski nagbabrown out. The best strategy, the best uh, packaging would therefore be supply, delivery, installation, testing of a generator set in a particular agency. Do you follow? Is that clear? Kung ano naman yan, kung mga say sa hospitals, example lang, kung sa hospitals naman, like MRI machines, ito yung ina-example ko if nagle-lecture ako sa mga DOH facilities sa hospitals, hindi yung procurement lang of MRI machine or X-ray machine. Kasi nakita na natin ang result. Na-deliver nga, nasa bodega, hindi naman nagagamit. Kasi hindi pa na-install. Wala pa pala sila room kung saan nilalagay. O si a result of a poor planning. Iba nga, sasabihin, na-install na ma'am. Wala lang kaming tao pa na mag-ooperate. E ba't nag-procure na? Hindi sinabay. Doon sa procurement yung hiring ng tao. At kasama dapat, doon sa, sa pag-procure yung training of the operator. So hindi na lang siya up to testing, but supply, delivery, installation, testing, training of the uh, 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 testing of the person that will operate the MRI machine or if it is, if it is an MRI machine. So, kompleto in other words. So that ang overall goal na kung may pasyente na pupunta sa isang hospital na operated by the government, applicable din yata ito sa LGUs natin kasi may mga hospitals tayong devolved sa mga LGUs, lalo na sa province, di ba? So, yung overall goal natin na pag may dumating na pasyente na hirap, kasi sino bang walang hirap na pasyente, walang mayaman na mga na pasyente na pupunta sa government facility, tatakbo yan sila doon sa mga private hospitals, di po ba? So yung pasyente na, na indigent, pagpunta sa government hospital, sasabihan, ay ma'am, wala pa kami nito na ano, kailangan mo magpa-X-ray. Punta ka sa private laboratory. Kawawang pasyente, walang pang gasto, walang pang bayad. Yun pala, nalaman, mayroon naman pala X-ray machine doon sa government hospital pero nasaan? Nasa bodega, hindi pa nakabit. So hindi pa nagagamit. Ilang months na, may wear and tear na yon hindi pa na-serve yung purpose. So see, these are examples and we can cite several of these as an example of a poor, poorly planned procurement. Okay? So yun. Uh, more on project costing. Some tips again. Although mga few slides lang ito. The practice of forecasting the cost of completing a project within a defined scope. So syempre meron tayong uh, limitation kasi mahirap yung hindi mo na malaman kailang ka titigil sa pag-factor in ng cost. So dapat mayroon ka din, uh, uh, again as I said, may budgetary context ka dyan. Diba? And when we do the summation of the individual cost elements, we can use established methods <coughs> and ensure na yung data natin are credible, valid, so that our take-off point, yun na nga sinasabi ko, yung relevant data na we use as your take-off point in estimating the future cost of that particular project is based on what is known today. So meaning, when you say project costing, you are starting somewhere and that somewhere is today. You're, you are starting from now, so you get a data that is credible today, factor in, using knowing na later on ka pa magbibili and you start to, sum, to do uh, an uh, sub addition of all the cost elements. And the prediction would include quantities, the cost, and the price of items of these resources required by the scope of an asset investment option activity or project. So in other words, consider all this when you do your project costing. Okay? And uh, over time, 
this determination using experience and calculating and forecasting the future cost of resources, methods, and management within a scheduled time frame. As I've said, mayroon tayong always a uh, uh, concrete reckoning frame, time frame, or context. Okay? And this will be critical for deciding. Kasi kung wala tayong concrete uh, uh, anong tawag ito? Contextualize on a certain time frame or certain limitation, we will not be able to immediately decide makakaya ba yan or hindi. Within, kaya ba yan matapos in a certain timeline or hindi. Yan. Or kaya ba yan ng ano natin, resources, financial or hindi. So these are crucial decision points that could be uh, aided that could be decided with, with dispatch if we have uh, a more, uh, shall we say, strategic way of determining the ABC or the cost estimate, okay? So, in addition, saan tayo nag-estimate when cost estimates are being prepared? Dito sa quadrant one, okay? And the answer, the question kasi is when, what is the appropriate answer during procurement planning, which is simultaneous with budget preparation phase. Copy? Ayan, that's the answer. Procurement planning, pero another, to, to complete the answer, more correct answer is during budget prep. Kasi pwede pa rin tayo gumawa ng PPMP, di ba? Pero after the budget prep. Ay sus, may ano na yan, may disconnect na yan. Nahuli na yung dapat na una. Okay? Okay, so, ayan. As early as the budget preparation through the issuance of the budget call, cost estimates can already be determined. And again, even prior to the issuance of the budget call. At times kasi, matagal talaga. Ilang ano yan, iteration. Nag-ano nag tayo, nag, uh, after computing, nag-uulit ulit kasi hindi pumapasa. Or parang may kulang. O sige, ulit ulit. So pag, pag enough ang lead time natin, we can do a lot of iteration. But because remember, ito yung justification mo. Later, ikaw na department head to justify why you are proposing a certain level of a budget. So kung hindi mo yan kaya i-justify, nako dadaan ka sa butas ng karayom during budget uh, hearings, di ba? Sa LGUs, usually ang nagkakandak ng budget hearing, sino? Pwede kayo kasi magkaroon ng dalawang budget hearing sa LGU. Una, doon sa executive budget hearing where each department is made to justify in front maybe of the LFC with the chairman committee on APRO already part of the panel and the local chief executive to determine the totality of your requirement. And then assuming pumasa ka dyan, na ipasok siya sa LEP, pagdating naman dito sa uh, authorization, pwede pa rin kayo isomon ng mga uh, ng mga sanggunian uh, members to justify again. So see, ito yung magiging reference mo. E di kung talagang pinaghandaan ninyo yung PPMPs ninyo, balik ta rin man ang mundo, balik ta rin man ang balibalik ta rin man ang question, kaya mong i-defend yung lahat ng tanong. Tama? Pero kung hindi mo ginawa yan talaga ng maayos, ay nakuhuli ka kaagad. Baka, baka disapprove pa yan. Okay, so more tools in project costing and determination of ABC are provided in this slide. We have what we call analogous estimating or a term also as top-down or historical costing. Okay, we also have what we call parametrics estimating, which is a method of estimating the cost of a project based on one or more cost factors. So 
example dito no historical big data then you uh, you add other uh, required cost elements from that historical data based on some parametric methods so parametric methods are often used in early estimating such as planning and scoping estimates so kung medyo maaga-aga talaga yung gagawin ninyo this could be the best method diba where even unit cost are also determined and it has to be very accurate for these methods to be effective. Usually sa infra, di ba, mayroon tayo dyan mga cost per square meter of a school building, of a building. Yan. So pwede siya ma-apply. Dito siya uh, magagamit. Dito naman sa bottom up or what we call analytical estimating, dito kasi itong analogous top down. Ito naman bottom up. Ito yung nagpo-provide ng most accurate estimating technique if if a complete work breakdown structure is available. What do we mean by a work breakdown structure? Also the most versatile estimating technique and you can use it in for many types of projects. Okay? Although quite time consuming, but if done early, this can again be uh, uh, used, no? especially in large and complex projects with numerous work breakdown structure components. Okay, then another which is a more practical is the life cycle costing. Another tip, life cycle costing. Yung ipfa-factor in muna yung other cost na nakikita natin related or necessary in its uh, to maintain the functionality of a particular item even up to the time of disposal. So yung whole lifespan of the item is already considered in life cycle costing. Uh, ito yung mga ano, comparative, comparative advantages and disadvantages that you can use and choose. Your decision can be based on this. Okay? So, in the analogous method, ito yung mga strengths niya, mayroon din siyang weaknesses, and you can use this to apply on a particular scenario, like what is stated here. So, if your data is limited, and your uh yung pag-order ninyo is relatively ano lang siya, parang rough order of your estimate, yung magnitude of what you are estimating is relatively, hindi siya ganon ka-detalyado. Only as reference for cross-checking, perhaps, you can use analogos. Kasi kailangan lang niya small data lang. Pero for production estimation, kung nag into mass production, particularly software development. Eh, wala naman tayo sa LGU niyan. Di ba? Or we are into negotiation. Bottom up is applicable. Kung we are using it for budgetary purposes, designed to cost trade studies as cross-checking, baseline estimate, and our uh, cost is to allocate, our cost goal uh, allocation is... Uh, is one of our intention, then parametric can be our choice. Okay? Now, for the elements of life cycle costing, ito yung reminder lang. As I've said, hindi lang yung acquisition cost ang titingnan natin, but rather some of the seemingly hidden cost. Hidden kasi hindi natin nafa-factor in. Pero actually, some of this nafa-factor in naman natin like yung maintenance cost. Diba? Yung regular check, uh, maintenance check, antivirus software, baka biglang mag-bug down yan kasi wala pala tayong antivirus software. Okay? Yung uh, operating cost, yung installation cost, testing, maybe disposal cost, maybe not really that requirement to be factored in immediately at the year you are procuring but in the year it is expected to be disposed 
Okay? We would know depending on the item we are procuring. Kasi nagvavary yung as uh, uh, anong tawag nito yung span ng life cycle niya nung life span of the equipment. Okay, so these are some tips while we are still uh, awaiting to be trained because that's a um, whole morning module on ABC costing as another uh, additional learnings if you want to focus on that later on. Now going into text text writing we also have some slides here that can help us uh, improve already our manner of planning. When we say text specs writing, that would be our pinaka heart of the contract. In other words, ito yung pinaka heart and soul kung bakit, kung ano ang kailangan natin bilhin. Okay? It will be a narration of what really will satisfy. Ano yung Magiging reference natin later on when if we ask ourselves, nasatisfied ba yung pangangailangan? Yes or no? Yan, oh, technicals is the heart of the procurement transaction. Correct? I totally agree with this. no? So, without a well-written text specs, we would not know. Para lang tayong uh, lumalangoy, hindi natin alam nakarating na ba tayo sa gusto nating puntahan Hindi natin masasagot yun kung hindi natin, hindi clear ang expectation yan. Kung hindi clear ang expectation, hindi clear anong kailangan natin bilhin at wala tayong na-establish na standard in determining later kung satisfied or not. Okay? Standard of acceptance pati sa inspection committee. Baka inspected lang siya in terms of quantity but when it comes to the quality aspect, hindi siya ma-determine acceptable ba o hindi. So that can really delay our procurement undertaking. Okay? So may proseso din na dadaanan sa paggawa ng tax specs. In the same manner sa paggawa ng costing. See? So all these two important processes needs time. Needs time. So number one, sa pag-identify ng tax specs, ang um, pag-develop ng text specs, gagawa ka muna, you will first go into the process of further, further, diagnose, uh, further asking yourself or do a more diagnostic study of what was listed as a need. Okay? Example, ano yung functions? Ano yung expected function of that item? Ano yung expected performance? and characteristics of the technical characteristics of that particular item listed as a need. So see, ano, anong purpose? Yan, that is what we mean by function. Ano yung purpose ng computer? Ano yung dapat performance niya? Saan siya gagamitin? How often ang use? These are questions along this first. The second is now you gather down the information. Based na, gagawa ka na ngayon ng market study. Based on the documents you gather from the market study, you now process and collate the information. Even online, as I've said, kung hindi ka makalabas to the market talaga, na physical labas, ha, you can still do this by doing maximizing use of the online platforms. And start na drafting the specs by compiling what you gathered na information and translate this into requirements. So, yung magiging output nito could be already a mixture, a combination of the specifications as far as function, performance, and design or technical. Okay? So, as shown here, this... This could be our sources of information. Previous records in your agency. You can request information from suppliers. Again, either through a pre-canvas form okay, or through phone calls. Pero mas maganda pa rin yung may evidence-based ka talaga, yung may papel ba. Hindi lang info kasi pwede rin yan makalimutan natin, di ba? By the time we sit down already and process the information, may, pan may 
it could happen na may makakaligdaan tayo. So mas maganda yung nag-email ka, sinagot ka din sa email, yun, you print yung response nila or nag 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 uh, nagtawag nito, nag-fax ka, then nagsagot din sila. Ayun. Then from other relevant government agencies, pwede rin tayo magpatulong sa oversight relevant agency, kung meds yan, DOH for example, kung mga agricultural machineries, pwede tayo magpatulong sa DA, lalo na at i-devolve na fully, di ba? Uh, we can also consult with technical uh, entities that provides issues, standards, technical standards, or certify, uh, certified uh, agencies, ISO certified. Professional technical associations, magazines, journals, and as I've said kanina, online or internet sources. So these are examples of what we have to bear in mind when we write the specs. It has to be clear. It has to be concise. When we say clear, not subject to double meaning. Concise, not wordy. Okay, again, not subject to, to another interpretation. Consistent, consistent with what we really want to, to address or to provide, what we want to satisfy na need. Okay, competitive. Remember, when we design the technical specs, it should uh, trigger more competition rather than stifle competition. It has to be complete. When we say complete, uh, yung lahat na hahanapin mo later, doon sa i-deliver, na kinakailangan mo sa pag-function mo, napasok mo in the write-up of the specs. That is what we mean by complete. So, to include fun, uh, the performance, the functionality, ayan, ito na yun. So, let's move on to the next slide. Ito na yun, no? Yung, when we say this relates really to completeness, when we say completeness of the specifications, yung functional specs nandyan, yung performance specs also is there, as well as the design specifications. So, if we consider this in mind, if we always follow this, walang, walang, agency or walang procurement key player na matcha charge ng COA, ng ombudsman, ng tailor fitting. Wala. Le let's learn lessons from those who have been already charged kasi marami na. Now they were charged branding. Alam naman natin, basic na bawal ang branding, naglagay pa rin ng brand. Okay? So these are results of, again, poor planning or talagang disregard for basic requirements in the law. Another, hindi naman nag-branding, pero nag-tailor fitting, nag-allude to a particular brand. What they did, copy-paste yung nasa leaflet ng isang product, uh, short of naming the brand. So, bawal din yun. So, ngayon, if you will put together, combine, Functional, performance, and design, ay wala talaga yan. Masasabi na nag-tailor fit tayo. Correct? Okay. So, uh, for example, for goods, generally, ang performance or fun functional specifications are preferred basta goods. Okay? In other words, hindi tayo masyado concerned sa design pag mga goods. For example, laptop. Hindi tayo particular kung malaki, maliit na laptop, makapal, manipis, mabigat, magaan. Diba? These are design characteristics yun. But we are more concerned on what? Makakakonect ba tayo sa internet niyan? Mabilis ba yan magloading or mabagal? Pwede ba yung battery niyan? Maglalast ba yan ng whole day brownout? Magagabit ba natin yan or not? Can it, uh, uh, pwede ba tayo dyan sa mga mag-install mag ng mga latest apps that we will need in our work or not? Yun, mga performance, ano yun? Or functional specs yun rather than design. Right? Do you agree? So for services naman, 
Kung services, ano naman yung ano natin, more concern? Kung mga services, janitorial, messengerial, security, ano examples? Dapat mag-write tayo ng specs for services. So meaning, if we will be procuring uh, janitorial, messengerial, security services, uh, what else? Health maintenance services and all. Yung description has to be detailed. Dapat ipuprovide natin. Ano ba yung particular service including time, duration, and place? Response time? Uh, detailed procedure and responsibilities and the uh, required supervision. So talaga applicable ito sa mga janitorial messengerial. And uh, the KPIs, the indicators that tama or, or acceptable yung performance of a particular agency service. Okay? Kaya mayroon din tayong mga uh, assessment of the performance of our janitors and security services, including messenger yard. Okay, so what about naman for infra? Medyo quick lang tayo dito ha, kasi marami-rami pa tayong slides. What about for infra naman? Ano yung dapat natin tingnan? What do we refer kung when we write the text specs for infra? The text specs for infra is referred to as your program of work. Ano yung scope ng work na gagawin? Kung repair, anong i -re repair Kasi ang repair is a generic term, correct? Repair of the ceiling. O, yung kesame i -re repair Ano particularly doon sa kesame? Yung buo ba yan? Or a par portion lang? Does it include the electrical? Does it include the, the molders? The moldings, I mean? Or does it include the painting? Yun. So specifications as well of the materials. Okay, the detailed drawings, the workmanship, ayan, and the special requirements as to machinery to be used in executing the works or the ambient condition. So all of this has to be factored in or considered if what we are procuring is infrastructure. So mas, mas time consuming ang infra, ang pagplan for infra. Again, sasabihin, ay may mga ready na dyan na mga design uh, template. I do not subscribe to that. Maybe again, as your initial take of point. Kasi depende din sa purpose. Sige, sa design, maybe may, may ano tayo, may mga uh, template or uh, tawag nito standard. Pero ang purpose nagvavary. Diba? Ang functionality of that structure can also vary. So, i-factor in na, na rin natin yun mga functionality as well of the structure. Including yung mga uh, site condition of the area where the building will be constructed. Particularly pa dito yung, ra or, uh, ano, tawag ito, yung road right of way. Wow. Yung road right of way, di ba? And uh, defining as well available site facilities, terms of installation, commissioning, and any requirements. Yung mga clearances, importante pa rin yan. Okay? At times, yun ang nakakatagal. Kaya uh, sa LGU level, hindi tayo excused from securing clearances even if we will be constructing these structures in LGU owned uh, lot. Diba? Mayroon tari pa rin tayo required clearances from environmental agencies like the DENR. Okay, when it comes to consulting services, when we write, <coughs> when we craft the TOR, ito din ang magiging consideration or are part of the TOR. The background why we are procuring, what is the objective, the scope of work. Again, that uh, anong may training kailangan ba? So scope of work would refer to deliverables. Ano bang i-deliver niya? A manual or just ano, a hardbound manual or just leaflets? Yan, very ano yan. Ano, kasama ba dyan ang training sa tao na 
uh, mag, uh, mag gaga, gagamit ng manual, the time schedule, uh, the reporting requirements, services and facilities, ano yung mga support na facilities na ipoprovide ng, ng agency. Okay, these are also importante dito yung tama, scope scope ah, dito pala yung element yung kasi ang usually ang consulting are time bounded so mga short duration lang ito no pinaka longest is 6 months but not beyond the term of the uh, yung deliverables beyond the term of the especially if you are hiring consultants uh, not the uh, not beyond the term of the head of the procuring entity dito ba that's one of the requirement Okay, so generally, these are our, again, generic uh, guideposts in writing text specs, either goods, infra, and consulting. Be consultative. Do not pretend. <clears throat> if you don't know, ask. Consult stakeholders. And as I've said, in that scenario, you can even engage services of technical experts either in-house or consultants. And we have to set clear specifications. We mentioned kanina, it has to be clear and uh, unambiguous, meaning not susceptible, not prone to another meaning. Para, para madali maintindihan ng mga sellers kung mayroon ba sila, wala. Okay, at tayo din later sa pagdetermine compliant ba or not yung bidder sa offer niya or hindi. Baka pati tayo, hindi rin natin alam. <laughs> In the first place, tayo yung mag-set ng text specs. So parang ano, nakakatawa naman yun. Okay, because again, we are reminded on section 18, bawal ang branding. Then we need to update our text specs where necessary kasi alam naman natin, especially mga technology. Uh, facilities, madaling nag, madali tayo na, na overtaken by recent technology and again the pinaka importante na i-consult natin yung user of the item to be procured. Okay? More tips. So, sige, marami tayong tips dito. Challenging kasi be as specific and detailed at the same time flexible. Ayan. Without compromising the objective. So, how do you balance being specific, specific and detailed as possible at the same time naman? Flexible. Uh, stating also a requirement of fact. We only state that one time to avoid duplication. And this is the more important. Explain the intent and purpose. Uh, that, that's why it has to be factored in. Okay, and also the uh, specify what you need and not how to get what you need. Problema na yan ng supplier. Paano nila sasagutin yung pangangailangan ng, sell, ng buyer? Okay, so sabihin lang natin what we need at sila na ang bahalang mag-adjust. That is the beauty also of market sounding or Nag, nag, ta, nagtatanong tayo or nagtadialog tayo with the market suppliers because they can still adjust their products to what we need. Okay? Para successful ang procurement. Baka din kasi yung mga pinuproduce pa nila, yung mga, yung mga antiquated na, hindi na yan ngayon ang kailangan ng, ng government. See? That's, all, that what we, that's what we mean by that. And look to increase competition, not to reduce it. Very basic requirement din yan. Hey, knowledge check again. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much po. So we are now down to our third poll questions. So at this point, may we request the participants to choose the appropriate answers in the pop-up poll and that shall be flashed in our screen. For our third question, technical specification must be prepared after posting or advertisement. If specifications are not properly prepared, it will be almost impossible to complete the bidding process and award the contract. Is it A, true, B, false? So then for uh, FB, FB Live viewers, po, you may also drop your answer to the comment section. So I repeat the question. Technical specification must be prepared after posting or advertisement. 
if specifications are not properly prepared, it will be almost impossible to complete the bidding process and the award the contract. Is it A, true, B, false? Okay. So again, reminders to the Zoom participants to please, to please accomplish the participants daily attendance sheet by clicking the link provided by our event secretariat in our Zoom chat box. Okay. So. Okay, I think ma'am, uh, we have the we have the majority answered po. So majority of the answered letter B false. Is this correct po, Ma'am Amy? Okay. Wala naman nag-answer ng yes ano. Meron ma'am. Meron I think ako. five. Five participants. Meron pa rin. Yes. Oo. O lima yung so, tama. Oo, medyo <laughs> Baka hindi nila talaga, baka nag-CR break siya in advance yung nagsagot ng true. Okay. Kasi ang correct answer dito, ang paggawa ng text specs must be done before the posting. Kasi procurement planning side pa tayo. Yes. Oo. Ang posting kasi nasa quadrant 3 na yan. Selection process na yan. So meaning, sa quadrant 1 and 2, dyan ang pag-write up ng text specs. Particularly quadrant 1. So before posting and advertisement okay okay so, so the right answer is false. false yes the answer is false thank you ma'am Amy. let's proceed po ulit okay so let's proceed bawi na lang kayo doon sa lima na nakasagot ng mali <laughs> nalungkot naman ako bakit may maling answer sige anyway sige so let's proceed <clears throat> Pwede pa rin tayo mag-consider uh, when we write text specs to already uh, incorporate uh, some of the uh, green specifications prescribed in GPPB Reso 25-2017 which approved the Philippine Green Public Procurement Roadmap. Especially sa LGU level, diba, we should protect our environment. We are near our uh, in our rural areas, it, talaga ang gaganda pa ng mga ano natin, uh, scenery. So maging more ano rin tayo, uh, environmental conscious by incorporating already in our text specs some of this. Ito yun mga uh, green uh, assessment matrix if we are already into green procurement. No? Kasi... Ano ba? Ano bang mga product ang mga binibili ng LGUs? Take a look at the commonly used office supplies and equipments, even the non-CSEs. Relatively, marami dito binibili na natin sa LGUs. So let's already uh, adapt to the green specifications as well. Copy? So I will not uh, dwell more on that. Let's go to the PR. Now remember... <clears throat> In no way that the an end user unit will issue a PR for something that is not in their approved PPMP. So in other words, dapat may PPMP muna ang isang end user unit. Gumawa muna kayo ng indicative, tapos na final siya bago magkaroon ng actual procurement, especially for. Uh, items that are not subject to the early procurement short of award. Okay? Now, again, let me emphasize that the request for purchase or requisition of supplies, materials, and equipment and its equivalent shall be duly approved by proper authorities. So, sino ang nag approve ng PR? Of course, the, the it is coming from the end user unit and approved by the hope or the head of the procuring entity or the authorized representative. But again, as I've said, it should not trigger for the actual procurement to be undertaken. I mean, particularly quadrant three to be done by the back. In other words, yung actual na na selection, but rather more of our procurement undertaken should be dictated upon by the schedules 
already included, already identified in the annual procurement plan that is already approved by the HOPE. So more of, more of a proactive na ang procurement and bulk consolidated rather than reactive. Kapi? Kasi kung ang procurement will be done through PR, in that way we can see, lalo na pag LGU, ilan kayo na departments. Marami yan. So ang frequency of the procurement will be that number. Wala na kayong ibang magawa kundi procurement ng procure kayo, meeting ng meeting kayo. And that's not the way to go. Okay? That's not our direction that we are, it would be a very monotonous activity that will be happening in your life. Talagang mawawalan na kayo ng live life niyan, pag ganyan, di ba? So, PR can just be perhaps a basis for the issue once already of the item that have been procured on schedule by the back for the whole department that are in the bodega or in the stock room. Yan, that could be the trigger point of issuing the item to the end user unit. Now, question. Ma'am, pwede pala yun? Na pwede hindi na pala based sa PR ang actual procurement? Eh, ang ano namin, ang schedule namin is iba-iba eh. Kasabihin ng end user unit. Uh, kami first quarter, sila second quarter, sila yung iba third quarter. Pwede pa rin ba yun na one procurement lang yan? Ano yung answer ninyo? What is the way to go? Strategic procurement tayo. We have to manage our procurement undertaking. So the answer is, yes, pwede pa rin. Bulk procurement, one bidding yan, but you establish your schedule of delivery. Kung wala kayong bodega, wala kayong enough stock room, or yung item will be damaged kung na i-stock for a long time, Kung mayroon man kayo, hindi properly ventilated. So, pwede pa rin mag-procure yung agency one time, pero you establish in your scheduling yung uh, ikakalibrate ninyo yung schedule of deliveries vis-a-vis -vis what are in the PPMPs of the various end-user units and also provide as well for, uh, ang tawag nito, uh, staggered payment based on what was delivered. Kasi baka walang interested supplier na mag-join kung may staggered delivery kayo pero wala kayong staggered payment allowed. Di po ba? So again, that could be a result of a well-thought, well-prepared APP of the agency. So as it is delivered, binabayaran, as it is complete, accepted, uh, inspected, accepted, babayaran, then you wait for the next delivery. Or another good modality, which is a product also of a successful competitive public bidding, is yung ano, framework agreement for items that you may need, which are perishable, which are small, small items, pero frequently procured. Or you know it will be needed anytime, but you don't know the exact time. And you don't also cannot establish the exact quantity. But you know it will come, nakakailanganin ninyo. So explore another way, another strategic way of procuring through competitive bidding, but yung resulting agreement is a framework agreement. Okay? Another, uh, ano yan, another uh, uh, word for thought, yung parang mga uh, good uh, insights that you can take on from there. Okay. Moving on to APP, ito na yung consolidated na, na mga PPMPs. As I've said, uh, ang APP ng isang LGU could be, ng isang agency can transform three times. I mean, from the, from the indicative APP, quadrant two yan, okay? Quadrant two is your indicative annual procurement plan. And as it is submitted by the by uh, by the governor mayor to the sanggunian baka nabawasan yung proposed ninyo sa end user unit as what is contained in the lep so magta transform again yung app into indicative app based on the lep okay assuming may reduction yung proposal ng na nasa ppmp hindi talaga siya na approve as proposed ng governor and mayor so pagdating ng LEP, 
bumaba. So bumaba naman, indicative PPMP, indicative ATP, uh, bumaba rin siya, nag-adjust din siya. And once ma-approve na yung budget, mayroon ng APRO ordinance, magkakaroon na ngayon ng another transformation, yung indicative based on the left, to what? What will now be the final? Final APP based on the APRO ordinance. Yapi? So, yun ang sinasabi dito na shall be undertake, no, the entirety of the procurement activities so that will be undertaken within the calendar year using the prescribed format shall be a one-year perspective. Ayan. One-year planning perspective. Kaya magkoconsolidate tayo, magbobol procurement tayo, mag streamline tayo para hindi, hindi piecemeal ang procurement but rather one time, big time. Yan ang ibig sabihin, di ba? Then, we can also consider for emergency contingency fund for the foreseeable uh, contingencies. And the more important is we can already schedule proactively our activities, knowing again na hindi lang yun ang tatrabahuin natin during the budget year. Mas may marami pa tayong important activities uh, na, na mga deliverables in our IPAR. Because each of us in the LGU has our own uh, performance also to be assessed, di ba? So more important yun, yung IPAR mo kasama sa DPAR, nakasama rin ng OPCR, I mean, uh, DPCR and OPCR ng buong agency. I, I hope you understand what I'm referring to in terms of our targets and uh, of the LGUs and our accomplishments. So that, as I've said, if we program our uh, procurement planning way ahead, we can still do simultaneously our work, inherent function, and this ad hoc function or this ad hoc responsibility. Question. Can we modify our annual procurement plan? Or it is already, once approved, hindi na pwede baguhin? Can we still modify? The answer is yes. Pwede pa naman. We can regularly maintain and update the same as the need arises. Regularly and as the need arises. Medyo may kaunti akong reservation doon sa as the need arises kasi baka naman masobrang abuso na na hindi na tayo, parang hindi na tayo nagplano talaga ng totohanan. <laughs> kasi anytime we need to modify, we can modify. Dapat mag-set tayo pa rin ng certain threshold. Siguro yung quarterly or semi-annually or uh, quarterly is, is okay but not perhaps on a monthly unless there are unforeseen emergencies. Di po ba? Para naman mapilitan rin tayo magseryoso sa plano, sa pag-procurement plan. Kapi? Okay, so uh, we can go into the tips in preparing, in consolidating the PPMP into an APP. Ayan, oh. It is emphasized here. In the consolidation, yung back, remember ha, sa consolidation, anong quadrant ito? Saan quadrant na tayo ngayon? We are speaking of the consolidation of the APP. Quadrant? Quadrant 1 pa ba tayo or umakyat na tayo sa quadrant 2? Quadrant 2 na tayo, ha? So, dito sa consolidation ng PPMP, pumapasok na ang back, di ba? Hindi lang sila nagre-recommend ng modality before they recommend the modality, i-consider muna nila mag-strategize in uh, pooling, packaging, similar items into one procurement undertaking. Ito na yung sinasabi ko kanina na magbubulk procurement na. Okay? That will now be the strategy that will be adopted by the BAC. After which, na consolidate na nila into one procurement undertaking, then the modality will follow. 
Kasi di ba, in the various PPMPs, small small items lang 'yon. So maybe yung threshold nila doon hindi pa nala, hindi pa tayo lumalampas sa threshold for SVP. Kasi yung requirement lang naman 'yon ng small unit. Pero put together, kung common items la 'yan, like computer, one computer, one computer, one computer, each unit equals how many na 'yan? Kung 10 units 'yan, di 10 computers na 'yan. 'Di ba? Or kung kung 55 times 10, that's already 50. Kapi, edi yung 50, baka more than the threshold na yan, depending on the income level of the LGU. So in which case, ang modality of procurement na i-decide na ngayon ng BAC will already be what is appropriate. Yun ang isang responsibility ng BAC. Kaya very important na hindi talaga ikakapi kasi yung iba, may nakita din kami na nag-consolidate ng PPMP. Anong ginawa nila? Parang dinugtong ng dinugtong lang. <laughs> Kung yung PPMP sampo, five pages each, yung APP nila naging 50 pages na. Have you seen one like that? Is that how you do the consolidation? Napaka ano yan. At Anong tawag nito? Uh, napaka, hindi nga natin matawag na traditional yan. Kasi I, I don't remember na may ganun tayong sinasuggest na consolidation before. So, ang consolidation is based on the items. Iko-consolidate natin, again, uh, yung common items at saka yung goods. Isa, isa, sa, isang APPP for all goods. Maybe isang another APP for all infra. Yun ang ibig sabihin natin ng consolidation. ha? Hindi yung pages na dinugtong-dugtong lang yung pagination. Okay, so ito dito. Oh. A review and updating of the individual PPMPs as well as APP shall be done regularly at least once every six months. Okay na sana ako dyan or at least every three months. Eh mayroon pa naman as often as necessary which could be <laughs> referred to as weekly, monthly. Nagplano pa tayo. Okay? Sige. So, ito yung preparation ng final APP based na this time on the GAA or on the APRO ordinance. So, the same pa rin. Start pa rin tayo sa binin yung information sa level of the approval. Kung magkano yung na-approve, bababa siya para aakyat uli. Parang, di ba yung inflow Uh, communications flow, ano yung ang magiging basis na end user pag-finalize ng PPMPs based on the APRO ordinance. The info that will be released later, uh, earlier na ito yung na-approve on a per agency or on a per department or pwede din kasi si governor or mayor will adapt a strategy na sasabihin ni Gov na, di, na, dis, na, na reduce ng sanggunian ang proposal ng executive branch. Pero hindi dapat magsasuffer ang mga basic services sa health, sa agriculture, sa social welfare. Go yung lahat ng nasa department na yon. Pero yung other departments, yun ang magmomodify tayo ng PPMPs. Ano yon Yung mga internal offices like assessor, treasury, budget, accounting, admin, Office of the Mayor, planning, pwede tayo doon mag, mag ano muna defer ng mga improvement ng mga offices, procurement ng mga equipments, pwede defer muna yon. But yung nasa for external clients, go. Kaya pwede hindi lahat mag adjust ng PPMPs, okay? Pero mag adjust pa rin to become final. Pero when you say adjust, walang reduction doon sa Uh, bibigyan na priority ng local chief executive. Kapi, pwede yung cut hindi across agencies, hindi across departments. That is what I mean. But could only be applicable to some offices. Para hindi masacrifice yung basic service delivery. Okay, I mentioned this. Ito yung another tip in consolidating PPMPs. You sort by type of procurement. So separate yung lahat ng goods, 
Lahat ng services, pwede pa rin natin siya i-separate. Separate yung infra, separate yung consulting. Okay, so ipupull together yung lahat na similarly classified. And then, we can also check for items which can be merged. So ano yung pwedeng emerge? For example, may, may item dyan, procurement of genset. Tapos may another item, installation services of the genset. Iba't pa pinaghiwalay yun. Pwede naman siya pag, sabay, pag, pag ano ba? Pwede siya put together or emerge. Mayroon pa rin siguro training or delivery charge for the, yan. That is what we mean by you consolidate all the cost component. Okay? Like design and build. Kasi nakita, may procurement for the design of the structure. So consulting siya. And then mayroon din yung construction of the building itself. So in that case, pwede siya tingnan na why don't we come up with a mixed procurement na lang, which is design and build. Okay? Or uh, kung IT naman yan, delivery, installation, testing, training, as the case may be. So yan, no? That's what we mean by that number two. Number three, uh, very easy yan. Classify mo lang CSE and non-CSE. Then by, by modality of procurement, yung lahat ng bidding, pagsamahin, lahat ng mga for alternative mode, another group sila. And another is also by fund. Kung based yan sa uh, APRO ordinance or charge sa LGSF, charge sa, ano pa rin tawag nito, sa mga donations, kasi may mga ano rin tayo, LGUs are receiving donations, pwede din siya another category of your funding source. Okay? So as you will see in this slide, our column headings for our APP already includes, as I've said, your timelines. So ito na yung susundin ninyo in the actual selection in quadrant 3. Saan ito gagawin again? Anong quadrant? Quadrant 2 pa lang tayo ha. Nagpaplano na tayo, kaya nga procurement planning. Nagpaplano na tayo, kailan natin i-advertise. So dahil ano na, quadrant 2 na ito, nagpaplano tayo sa advertisement na gagawin in quadrant 3. So wala na dito talaga, hindi na mangyayari na after pa ng posting advertisement ang pag-determine ng text specs. Dapat nauna talaga siya, which is in quadrant 1. Okay? So dito, uh, as I've said, this will now dictate your uh, scheduling, not necessarily again the PRs. Okay? Then, uh, simple ano lang din dito, uh, determination of the budgetary requirement that are found in the proposed budget kasi indicative pa lang naman ito. And once final, ang magiging source reference na nato, natin sa estimated, hindi na siya estimated budget this time, but approved budget is the APRO ordinance. Okay, and uh, of course, there are instructions provided for guidance of the... So just for the information na siguro ito sa mga end user units, who are not really the ones involved in the consolidation and filling up of the APP. So now you will see that your PPMP finds its way to the APP as an input. So kung wala kayong PPMP, wala kayong input dito sa APP, pwedeng walang bilhin for your department. Magre-reklamo kayo kung walang bilhin, nag-PR kayo, wala, wala, hindi pala nabili. Sabihin na natin, ano, wala silang karapatan mag-PR kasi hindi man pala sila naggawa ng PPMP in the first place. So to, to serve as a lesson, may mga nagsasabi na budget officers, ay, ang hirap magpasubmit ng PPMP sa mga end user units, ma'am. Ang titigas ng ulo, stubborn. Sasabihin, bakit hihingi na ngayon? Hindi pa naman ngayon magbibili. Next year pa naman kami bibili. Ayan, <laughs> ganun, no? Now, siguro after this training, wala nang mag magreklamo ng ganun. 
at maaga na silang magsasubmit. Kung ako ang budget officer, ako ang BAC, ako ang governor mayor, wala akong ipapabili for that department na hindi nag-submit ng PPMP. At the next budget cycle, maaga pa sa alas 5, pag sinabing submit PPMP, nako, mabilis na yan mag-submit. Kasi nadala na siya sa hindi nag-submit, eh wala rin siya. Sasabihin, wala na kaming papel. Anong sasabihin na lang ng supply officer? E di mag-recycle ka. Side A yung ginamit mo last time. Ngayon, side B ka na naman. That's what you learn if you are not complying with the processes. Copy. E what about yung hindi nare-recycle? E di mag-tsaga ka na muna dyan sa luma. <laughs> so this is, this is an example of an actual APP. And pwede ba gumawa ng supplemental? Sinabi ka natin kanina, yes, pwede. O umpisa again from the end user unit and find its way again. So back to quadrant one and two tayo. Okay, always bear that in mind. And still to be approved by the help in quadrant two. So these are some notes in filling out the annual procurement plan. Meron naman dyan mga drop down, madali. Pero yung others, will, uh, walang drop down. So talaga mag encode kayo. Okay. Uh, what up the others? Ano pa yung nandito? Mga self-explanatory na yung iba. Ilang slides pa ba tayo, Joe? Para mayroon tayong open forum pa. Ah, medyo marami. 11.30 na, no? Sige. Huwag na tayong mag-discuss in detail dito, ha? Alam nyo na to. Move tayo sa early procurement short of award. Kasi this is something new siguro sa mga LGUs natin. So please be guided with GPP, GPPB RESO 14-2019. And again, applicable din ito sa local government units. So what's in it for us? Yan. Early completion of procurement projects, timely implementation, and effective management of our procurement projects. Ako, I can say and added here, uh, economic activity at the LGU level will be pump prime. Pump, it can pump prime economic activity and it will immediately result to uh, mafeel agad, mararamdaman agad ng community yung services na mapuprovide ng project na yan. Yan ang pinakamaganda. Si Juan de la Cruz at the end of the day are smiling at their government kasi happy sila. Hindi sila naka-frown sa kanilang gobyerno. Remember ngayon with the devolution with EO138, government is now going closer and closer to the people it seeks to serve. Palapit ng palapit ang gobyerno sa taong bayan. Kung kaya tayo na nasa front line, and I am referring to all of you at the LGU level, stand to the challenge. Level up are you, our capabilities. Hindi lang along procurement, maraming trainings ang ipuprovide along CAPDEV para matulungan ang ating LGUs na makapag-absorb uh, ng dagdag na trabaho. Kasi you have resources to back you up. You have financial resources to back you up. And here we are, the GPPB and us as the extension, backing you up in is leveling up, strengthening your capacities along uh, procurement. And hindi lang procurement, along budgeting, along planning at the higher level, yung uh, regional interagency team natin. Okay? And... As I've said, kasama kayo kasi nandito kayo uh, up pro ordinance for local government units. So maybe all these years you were saying kasi 2016 pa yung IRR na nag-allow ng EPA. Since then, may mga LGUs na until now, wala pa silang EPA. Ano ba yung na-lecture -na ko lately ng mga LGUs na wala pa silang EPA? And they are now considering conducting one. Even hospitals, mayroon pa rin hospitals na hindi pa nag e pa. Mas marami na sa SUCS kasi uh, inaano na namin yung SUCS at saka for PBB purposes. Marami ng NGAs also but very few pa sa LGUs level. Kaya 
more advocacy pa tayo dito sa LGUs level in conducting the EPA. Okay, ano yung subject for EPA doon sa Indicative Annual Procurement Plan ninyo? Yung modality na for competitive public bidding, yung for al other alternative methods of procurement, pwede rin except. Except dito. So kung ito yung modality sa Indicative APP, defer ninyo ang procurement. Wait tayo sa, execute, sa execution phase. Meaning, quadrant 3 natin ito gagawin. Quadrant 3 during budget execution phase. Whereas, itong competitive bidding, alternative methods of procurement na iba, quadrant 3 pa rin yan gagawin natin pero during budget authorization phase. Okay? And let's review what we need to prepare for us to do successful EPA. And yun ang quadrant 1 and 2. I will not repeat anymore. Kasi medyo matagal-tagal tayo doon nag-usap. Diba? So what is just a requirement is <clears throat> your indicative APP based on the LEP. Yun ngayon ang gagawin muna. As soon as the LEP is submitted, the local expenditure program is submitted by the uh, local chief executive to Sanggunian, gagawa na kayo ng indicative APP based on the LEP. And pwede na ang BAC mag-umpisa, mag ng EPA while your sanggunian is deliberating on your, on the proposed executive budget. Okay? Another knowledge check? Yes, ma'am. Thank you po. So, okay. So, for our fourth knowledge question. So, for the first to correct the answer this particular question via the Zoom chat box, we'll receive once again a special token from the GPPB TSO. Okay? So again, sa Zoom chat box po tayo magsasagot ng ating answer. For the, for the question number four is, early procurement activity is applicable for procurement projects undertaken through negotiated procurement under small value procurement. Is it A, true, B, false? So again, early procurement activity is applicable for procurement projects undertaken through negotiated procurement under small value procurement. Is it A, true, B, false? Tingnan ko nga ang mga answers ninyo. Okay, very good. Sige. Sige, Jo. Okay na, Jo. Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Majority po sa sagot sa ating uh, chat box is false. Ang nauna pong sumagot ng false is, yes, ma'am, is from LGU. Well, right, ma'am, ha? Yeah. Na-validate pa po na ating, uh, ating technical may team. May nagsagot ba ng true? Meron ma. Meron din. <laughs> Siguro hindi niya talaga nabasa yung slide na yon, no? Kasi parang nasa ano siya, one corner of the slide yung mga exception. Yes. And to announce the winner po, ma'am. 
Okay. Announce the winner who answered false is from LGU Magdiwang Romblon, Miss Janzel R. Kapispisan. Wow, house and love. Okay, so congratulations po, ma'am. So meron po mag-message sa'yo from our secretary team. So paki-reply na lang po for the details po kung saan po namin papadala yung um, simple token po from GPT BTS. Okay, ma'am, let's proceed po. Okay, very good. So again, let me remind uh, yung sa saan na tayo? Dito yon no? Ito. Very recent pa yung question. Ito, oh. yung mga small value procurement are exceptions for to be conduct uh, para maisama ninyo mag-conduct ng EPA. Okay? Deferred siya to the during execution phase na siya. Okay, so moving on. Uh, the preparatory activities, uh, of course, you have to post it in your uh, uh, transparency seal, but maybe this is applicable for the national. Another is the CAF. Common din ito, sinasabi ng mayor in one training that I a lecture, nagtanong, ma'am, hindi kami makakandak ng EPA kasi yung accountant namin nagahanap ng wala daw basis for, for her to issue the CAF kasi wala pang APRO ordinance. So again, emphasis, hindi requirement ang certificate of availability of funds for conduct of the EPA. Kasi ang reference natin dito is the Indicative Annual Procurement Plan based on the LEP and not the Certificate of Availability of Funds, okay, for LGUs. And uh, yung mga big docs natin, including yung posting sa field jobs, shall also expressly provide or indicate that the LGU will be undertaking an early procurement through EPA. So dapat, very transparent din tayo para walang false expectation coming from the suppliers. Baka akala nila immediately pag sila yung LCRB, mag-expect sila agad ng award. Remember, ang award nito will be dependent on the approval of the budget through an APRO ordinance. So good kung hindi madelay ang approval. E kung madelay, mayroon, pa naman, mayroon na naman waiting time. And in which case, while hindi pa na-approve ang budget or kung madelay man, mayroon tayong tinatawag na tolling of periods or we stop the count, the, the counting of the timelines. Okay? So, but before we go to the tolling of the periods, as I've said, very important na before you conduct the EPA, mayroon talaga kayong uh, effort to inform your usual, your uh, registry of service providers that your LGU will be conducting an EPA and encourage participation from them para explain you rin ano ba tong EPA, ano yung mga requirements, ano yung mga conditions para alam nila at ma-avoid yung mga conflict at mga false expectation. Pwede ba yung gawin ng LGU? Hindi ba kami ma-ano ma, ma charge na baka sabihin na uh, yung in-invite lang namin or those lang na gusto namin manalo? Of course not. Kasi that could be part of the uh, also, anong tawag nito? Uh, educating our service providers on the requisites of the EPA. Hindi lang yung tayo lang yung may alam, tayo na buyer. Okay? Also, the sellers has to be properly informed para din makapag-submit sila ng proposal and wala, walang mas na, na, na fit for your needs at mag Mag, anong tawag ito, magiging compliant sa mga conditions later when you do the actual procurement na. Now, for as long as you do that briefing half day or what, or a day prior to your posting, ha? Huwag muna, huwag kayong mag-briefing na tapos na kayo nakapag-post. Okay, you do it before you start quadrant three. Then, ito yung pro uh, procurement timeline that I, I was referring to. Pwede siya uh, ma-extend uh, for a rebidding if there is a rebidding for within 15 days after each declaration of failure of bidding, which may also be extended up to 30 days upon approval of the HOPE. Assuming nagkakaroon ng 
failure of bidding. And there could also be revision of the indicative APP before award of contract. Kasi it could happen, as I've said, kasi remember, ang basis natin sa EPA is the LEP, Local Expenditure Program. Kung walang change ang levels of the budget from the LEP to the APRO ordinance, uh, magkakaroon ng approval based on the APRO ordinance. Meaning, pwede na ngayon ni HOPE i-award yung contract. Yung, rec uh, yung recommendation ng BAC to award will now be done by the HOPE. Based on the final APP, uh, approved APP based on the APRO ordinance. What about kung may reduction? Or kung talagang nawala yung project na yun in the APRO ordinance, what will happen? Of course, wala na nga yung basis si HOPE to approve or to award sa recommendation ng BAC. So magkakaroon ng disapproval. And the HOPE will now notify the BAC and the bidder in writing of the decision and the grounds. Okay? So uh, the first step. Let me repeat. The first step, once the APRO ordinance is out, is to finalize, prepare your final APP based on the APRO ordinance and determine yung mga EPA na nagawa. Andyan pa ba sa final APP based on the APRO ordinance? If yes, the recommendation by the BAC to award will proceed. The HOPE will now award. But of course, Pwede pa rin i-exercise ni Hope yung reservation clause. Kung mayroon siyang malaman at reason na pwede niyang i-disapprove pa rin, maski nasa APRO ordinance, pwede pa rin gawin ng Hope. Okay? Without prejudice to that exercise of the reservation clause. Pero kung wala na siya doon sa final APRO ordinance, dapat may intindihan din niya ng mga bidders, lalo na nung LCRB, kasi in the first place, inexplain niyo na sa umpisa pa lang, na baka ito ang mga possibilities. Yung mga possibilities lang naman ang i-explain ninyo at ano ang mangyayari. So hindi na kayo kailangan mag-explain ang mag-explain uli kasi alam na nila yan. Kapi, that is the beauty kung, kung uh, alam nila ano yung ibig sabihin ng EPA at ano ang mga possible mangyari. Okay? So let's go to the instances na Uh, sinasabi kasi natin, ang EPA, early procurement, is short of award. Meaning, mag-award lang kung mayroon ng APRO ordinance. So may mga scenario tayo na ipapakita where we, this can guide the agency whether to award or not. Okay? So, for example, diretso na lang tayo sa example. Mas madali na. Huwag na tayo magbasa dito sa ano. Kung yung nasa left, it It, i replace lang natin ha kasi national ito na example. National expenditure program ito. So lagyan natin dito local expenditure program. 1 million for a certain project. So the back of the LGU nag nagkandak ng early procurement activity. So natural yung ABC nila 1 million pa rin. Naghappen na yung lowest calculated and responsive bidder yung quotation niya talaga exact 1 million at pumasa siya sa lahat up to post wall. Lumabas sa APRO ordinance. Okay, change din natin ito. Hindi na rin ito JAA. Uh, APRO ordinance dito. 1 million. In this instance, the local chief executive can award or not the, con the NOAA. Can issue the NOAA or not? The answer is can issue the NOAA. Meaning, yes, an award can be made. Okay? Second example. The LEP is 1.2 million. The ABC is also 1.2 million. The lowest calculated and responsive bidder was only 1 million. In which case, parang may lumalabas na 200,000 savings ang agency dito. And yung lumabas sa APRO ordinance 1 million. So, award or not? Tingnan nyo yung slide. Award. <laughs> Kasi dito, to award. So, in this instance, pwedeng mag-award. Kasi yung 
yung approved level, hindi pa uh, within siya sa LCRB. Hindi kayo kukulangin enough yung approved level sa LCRB. Okay. Moving on to the next. Tingnan ninyo. Okay. In this example, yung LEP, 1.5 million. Yung ABC, 1.5 million. Yung LCRB, 1.3 million. So, nirecommend award kasi within naman siya sa ABC. In fact, lower. Pero pagdating ng APRO ordinance, hala, biglang nawala. Biglang nawala, na-slash. Award or not? Of course, hindi ka makapag-award kasi wala ka ng pambayad. Okay, that's one. Kasi talagang nawala siya. Next, hindi naman siya nawala pero nabawasan. Lumiit, mas maliit yung nasa APRO sa LCRB by 100,000. Award or not? At maghahanap ka na lang ng 100,000 later, pandagdag sa kulang. Kasi kulang lang naman ng 100,000. Award or not? Still not award. Okay? You will do another procurement. Maybe you will now uh, modify your scope of work para magkasya sa 800,000. Ito na ngayon yung sinasabi na yung PPMP is now uh, adjusting to the approved budget level. Kapi, hindi na ito yung uh, hindi na masusunod yung original plan kasi nga nagkaroon ng reduction in the level of the budget. Kapi, I hope yes, the answer is yes. Okay. So another Ah, okay, tapos na pala. I said earlier na in all the instances na not to award or even to award, ito yung mga instances na we should observe. Sinabi ko, no, yung reservation clause under section 41, the hope can still exercise that reservation clause. <clears throat> Kasi, <clears throat> <clears throat> Discretionary right niya yan. When you say discretionary, regardless kung may budget approved or not, pag may reasonable ground, justifiable and reasonable ground, not to award the contract. Kasi kung ituloy niya, it will, it will be detrimental to the government. So, pwede pa rin ma-exercise ni Hope. Kapi? Hindi siya pwedeng pilitin ng BAC na Nandiyan man sa budget, ba't hindi mo ina-approve? Yan. Pwede ka lang mag-disapprove kung wala sa budget. Hello? Sabihin ninyo ha, Mayor, Governor, I am invoking Section 41 because of the following reasons. So dapat mayroon din uh, klaro na rason bakit. Okay, so again, another example. Kung yung, <clears throat> kung yung funding source, nag-conduct kayo ng EPA, most likely based on the provisions sa GAA na mayroon kayong uh, financial assistance, for example, that will be released to the LGU. Then pagdating ng panahon, nawala din yun. Or kung mayroon man binawi yung, uh, yung SARO, Nag-issue ng negative release document. So yun, pwede rin siya hindi i-award. Yun talaga. Klarong hindi na yan abuse ng discretion. Uh, let me just emphasize, dito sa section 41, kaya dapat justifiable and reasonable ground lang para hindi naman ma-abuse yung, yung right na to ng mga hope. Matemper pa rin yung discretionary approval niya with the Uh, citation in the law itself, ha? in the section 41 itself, of what are the reasonable grounds. Otherwise, pag hindi, ma, hindi pasok sa reasonable ground yung reason ng hope in disapproving the contracts, it can also be tantamount to, it can be construed as abuse of that discretion. So pwede panagutin, pwede ma-made uh, ma accountable 
ang ating head of the procuring entity in that situation. Okay? So, yung tolling of periods, sinabi na natin kanina, may example tayo dito, go tayo, yan. So, sa tolling of periods, may sample timeline. So, uh, again, this could be an example sa, sa national agency. Uh, siguro, uh, uh, Joe, take note natin. May mga slides na kailangan din natin itweak konti for LGUs, no? So, this is applicable for NGAs kasi yung start ng ano nila, start ng tawag nito ng EPA, nag-start sila ng July. So, hindi ito magiging applicable sa LGUs kasi ang, ang submission ng LEP to the Sanggunian is sometime October. Okay? So, mababago ito dito, magiging July, ah, magiging October ito dito, uh, pero just for discussion purposes, okay? For discussion purposes, stick tayo sa mga dates na naka-indicate just to emphasize when do we stop counting and when do we continue counting the timelines. That is the purpose of this example. Okay? So, nag-umpisa, nag-bid opening yung agency, July 30. Nakapag-recommend ang BAC, October 11, tumakbo na ng 73 calendar days. And October 12, nag-submit ngayon yung mayor ng local expenditure program sa Sanggunian. So from starting October 12, stop yung, yung counting ng period. Ito yung tinatawag na natin na told period. Then yung approval ng APRO ordinance, hindi na ito again GAA, happened January 1. Tapos may 15 days na binigay, di ba? Sabi natin may Pwede may 15 days na ibigay sa HOPE to award the contract. So, nagkaroon, nag-award ngayon yung HOPE, January 16. Okay, ngayon ang question. Ilang days pa ang naiiwan sa procuring agency to complete the procurement timeline? Para hindi naman siya ma-charge na nag exceed sa maximum period. So, ang, ang answer is what? Ilang days pa mayroon to complete the three-month process? Ilang days? 17 days pa. Meaning, until January 18. Counting from January 1. From the approval and effectivity of the GAA. So, yung in-between. Yung October 11, ano, October 12 to December 31, hindi na counted. Nakita natin, hindi natin binilang because hinihintay nga natin na ma-approve yung APRO ordinance. Okay? So, uh, ayan, very clear na dito. Na ito na yung nag-summarize ng, ng, ng diagram that was flashed. So the hope will have 17 days to complete the procurement process from the approval and effectivity of the funding source. So this is the period remaining from the three-month period to complete the procurement process. Okay? So kung magkaroon ng approval after January 1, kung madelayed pa further, kung madelayed pa yung approval, not January 1, but say another date, later date, so magkukontinue yung pag -tol ng period. At yung counting again will resume only on the effectivity date. So kung February 1 yan, February 1. Copy. Okay, so knowledge check again. Okay, ma'am. For our last knowledge check question po. So again, uh, this time po, sa, balik na po tayo sa ating poll question po. So in the case of re-enacted budget, the procuring entity may also award the contract for new procurement projects undertaken through EPA. Is it A true, B false? Uh, 
I repeat ko po yung questions. In the case of reenacted re budget, the procuring entity may also award the contract for new procurement projects undertaken through EPA. Is it true or false? Okay, so medyo okay. ma'am nag-iisip sila. So konti antayin lang po natin ma'am. ating Parang may nagbabag, nag-iisip eh. Kaya nga, binalik, nga, binalik ko daw sa slide. Eh. Uh, para hindi naman sila mahirapan. Alam kong nahirapan yan sila. Lalo na atutom na sila. <laughs> baka pumantay na si True Mami. Eh. Ang dami oh. <laughs> So, mukhang marami pa rin ma'am uh, undecided. Ah, marami pa rin yung nakakapalisan. Yes ma'am. Kailangan na talaga Kasi, natin. Kasi mukhang... <laughs> Logistical <laughs> support. <laughs> yeah ma'am, kita niyo ma'am. Oh. May mga nag-iisip pa rin po ng kanilang isasagot. So, <laughs> sigur, I, I will give five seconds na lang po to for the final uh, result po ng ating uh, call question. Very important yung question sa LGU kasi marami tayong LGUs ang may mga reenacted budgets. Okay ma'am, I think uh, we all... We can go uh, beyond 12 naman ano? Yes ma'am. So I think ma'am we all we already reached na po yung majority ng answer po sa ating poll question. So uh, majority answered letter B false. So let us see po if that is indeed the correct answer ma'am I. Okay, sige. Ano yung correct answer natin dito? Pag reenacted budget, hindi tayo pwedeng mag-award for New projects. Ayan. Only for recurring projects. So again, uh, yung hindi nagbasa dito, yun ang undecided. <laughs> Kasi dito lang tayo kanina nag-focus. No? Hindi ko na ito na-emphasize kanina. But common sa mga LGUs natin, alam natin yan, na pag reenacted budget, in fact, uh, uh, applicable nga lang ito sa National Government Agency, Joe, eh. Kasi sa local government units, pag reenacted budget ang LG, wala silang project. No. Bago, uh, ano hindi natin yan na, sa, as we improve our slides. Sa LGUs kasi, pag reenacted budget, uh, ang dim reenacted lang nila are the PS, the salaries lang in fact, and the maintenance, the, the essential MOOE. No project can be implemented. Yan ang isang ano, uh, down, uh, downside pag ang LGU are operating on a reenacted budget. Okay? Kaya talaga dapat nag strive hard si LGU, si mayor, si governor with the sanggunian para talaga magkakaroon ng uh, legislated budget every year. Okay? Kasi may mga instances, may ginawa naman budget pero hindi rin napasa sa sanggunian. Kaya reenacted. Mayroon din LGUs na wala talagang ginawang budget yung LGU. So again, reenacted. So whichever are the circumstances, ganun pa rin ang effect. Nagsasuffer yung community kasi walang projects na may implement. Okay? So sige, next. Dito na tayo sa simplified posting and electronic submission of procurement reports. Uh, again, more of our reminders lang naman din ito. These are not something new. These have been there na mga reminders natin for submission. Kasi nga, ang GPPB natin is not present naman in the regions and they are there up at the central office in Manila. 
So their monitoring, their function uh, on monitoring is based on reports. So dapat religious yung mga agencies in submitting all the reports. And we are referring to the APP and to the PMRs. A APP kasi is just the plan of the items to be procured, schedule and all. Pero yung actual na nangyayari is sometimes exactly different. Wala sigurong very rare siguro ang agency na exactly the same sa PMR. Kung ano yung nasa APP, exactly the same sa PMR. Napaka predictable naman talaga nung lahat na ginawa nila. Ano na predict nila up to the last detail. But it could really happen na yung actual na nangyari during the year ay nag-deviate from what was in the APP. And that's okay. That's okay. For as long na sinunod natin yung tamang process. So yung reporting... Once a year sa APP is January 30, pero yung may updating tayo na pwedeng i-allow uh, July, pero yung reporting ng PMR, uh, twice a year yan siya. For January to June, dapat isubmit natin siya July 14, and yung uh, July to December naman is due January 14. Okay. And I think may mga LGUs na rin tayo na nag-subject nag themselves into the conduct of the APCPI, the Agency Procurement Compliance Performance Indicator. So may requirement din na magsasubmit ng results uh, by March 31, yung, yung result ng uh, APCPI assessment. Okay? So may mga mandatory submission in prescribed uh, formats please be guided to on this including the mandatory posting of the apps and pmrs in the agency website ang mandatory posting na lang of the app and pmr is only in your agency website not anymore in the gppb website. Okay? Kasi magpapadala na lang tayo ng electronic mail. Okay? Sa GPPB. So next, ay, that's the end na pala. That's the last slide. So, uh, thank you very much. Maraming salamat. Maayong hapon. Daghang salamat sa Mindanao. Hindi ako marunong mag, ano, <laughs> bisaya lang. Bisaya lang ang alam ko. So, daghang salamat sa tanan. And I hope I was able to give justice to the well-prepared presentation and with slight modifications in my presentation. So thank you very much once again. Back to you, Joe, my partner. Hello, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am Amy, for that wonderful uh, uh, discussion. Po. Very, uh, very interesting. Po. And I hope na marami po tayong natutunan. Especially kami rin po may natutunan po sa mga experience na sinay po ni Ma'am Amy. So, with that po, um, Ma'am, would you like to break muna po? Para lang... Um, uh, okay lang. Okay lang? Okay lang. We can, so, we can still proceed with some of the forum. Yes, Ma'am. Okay po. For a while, Ma'am, ha? So, wait. So, dyan natin din. Okay, ma'am. So, for the open forum, ma'am, uh, please be informed that we already... Uh, so, we have two questions, ma'am. So, we already fielded po yung mga questions posted in our Zoom chat box and with our Facebook uh, comment section po. So, for the first question... Is there a template for ABC for procurement of goods and services? Uh, anong ibig sabihin ng tanong? Template for the uh, determination? Ano yung, yung procedure in determining the ABC? Parang wala naman. Kasi it will depend again on the, on the modality or on the, man, the, the, the strategic approach an LGU will adapt. Okay, so it could just be a pro forma sample, siguro yung, uh, okay, yeah, I understand yung pro forma example in 
determining uh, a, a project cost. Maybe when you go to the level two uh, training where you, you will really have a full, full half day lecture on ABC costing, baka mayroon. Pero I don't remember, John, no? na may, may present na template for, yes, for sample. So yung question medyo hindi parang incomplete po siya kung what kind of template po talaga yeah. yung tinatanong po uh, dito. Mayroon nagsabi sa chat box na sample form daw. Again, mahirap din tayo mag-ano ng sample kasi mag-vary din depending on the items no that you are uh, procuring. So kung equipment yan, siguro mag-sample tayo sa vehicle. May mga, may mga presumption lang. Vehicle, ilang years na siya. So meaning, uh, ang pag-change oil niya is frequent. So idadagdag mo yun, yung frequency ng change oil. At anong level na yung ano niya, travel, distance traveled niya, i-determine pa yan. So I think, uh, ah, ang ano, tanong, parang customized po ba ang form for the LGU? Wala nga tayong, ano, wala akong na-encounter so far in my Uh, 16 years into these lectures, conducting lectures regarding the determination of the ABC. Siguro kung mayroon man, tayo makita, these are actual documents that have been used by particular agencies. But so far, GPPB, TSO has not uh, prescribed parang a standard so far. no? Okay, so Uh, maybe doon, even siguro sa may mga customized gener generic procurement manual, LGUs mayroon tayong uh, customized procurement manual for LGUs dati. Ano ng status lately? Hindi ko na nasundan. Ano ba yung status na lately doon? Na overtaken by events yun, Joe, di ba? So, siguro if we come up with ano, if we will if we will project to revive updating the procurement manual customized for LGUs, we can perhaps uh, provide some samples, okay? For example, uh, for goods and services. Sige, duly noted. Pero sa ngayon, wala. Okay? Sige, let's move on to the next slide. The next question. Okay. Yes, ma'am. For, for our last question po, is submission of EPP for the consolidation is only applicable for LGU who conducts EPA? Ay, hindi. Lahat po, lahat ng mga, uh, it's a normal process. It's a regular process. Quadrant 1 and 2 should be always followed. Meaning, mag-uumpisa tayo sa preparation ng mga PPMP and i-consolidate dito sa quadrant 2 for to become your indicative ATP. Whether uh, magkakandak kayo ng EPA or not. Okay? Ganon talaga. I-consolidate talaga siya ang PPMP to become an annual procurement plan. So that's the best strategic planning direction. Para, especially kung hindi kayo mag-EPA, During execution phase, ang dami na ninyong ipoprocure niyan. Correct? So all the more, dapat naka-program, naka-schedule naka talaga yung mga procurement undertakings ng isang LGU para hindi naman kayo magkaroon ng anong tawag nito, procurement overload <laughs> or over fatigue just because frequent ang procurement ninyo. So kailangan pa rin talaga yung consolidation. And remember, not Na, there is no provision in the law and the rules that speaks of PPMP as the basis for procurement. Never. Okay? Always the basis for procurement is an approved annual procurement plan, whether indicative or final. So which means, pag mayroon tayong back na nagpo-procure based on PPMP, you are, you, you are doing it in the wrong procedure you are doing it you are not doing it right in other words that's not the mo, the efficient effective way of conducting your procurement undertaking copy copy ma'am so are you still uh, with us so show up thumbs, thumbs up nga po sa mga zoom participants 
So apologize po na umabot po tayo ng uh, past 12 but I am sure na marami po tayo natatunan kay Director Amy Laceras po. So now before we proceed to the final reminders po. So allow me to provide a recap or, or bird's eye view uh, of today's learning sessions. So today we had an entire session on procurement planning and budget linkage, including the early procurement activities, where we had a comprehensive discussion on the importance and fundamentals of procurement planning. We also highlighted the basic principles and the vital role of market research in procurement planning. We also had a profound discussion on project procurement management plan and annual procurement plan, where we had a deep dive on the guidelines in the preparation of the set procurement documents. We also had an in-depth discussion on the scope and application of the conduct of early procurement activities led by none other than our resource speakers, Director Imelda C. Laceras. So once again, we do hope that we're, a, we're all able to have a deep dive in our today's learning sessions on procurement planning and budget linkage and early, including early procurement activities. For the final importance reminder, kindly, again, we would like to remind the participants to please accomplish the participants' daily attendance form by visiting the link provided in the chat box. So rest assured that all information gathered for this online training shall be treated with utmost confidentiality, consistent with the provisions of the Data Privacy Act. And for our early bird winners and KC knowledge check winners, again, kindly check your respective emails or chat box and kindly respond with the details needed. Finally, for, tomorrow's, for tomorrow, the third day of our week-long virtual event, please be reminded that the program shall start at 8 a.m. And we would like to request everyone po again to log in at least 10 minutes before the program so that we can start on time. Also, please be advised that, that we shall again be using the Zoom platform, which credentials are provided by the event secretariat. For concern and other matters relative to our program, you may directly coordinate with Mr. Mark Duetes or any of our GPPB secretariat. Finally, may we request everyone to please switch on their cameras to commemorate this learning session with our resource speakers. Okay, so yan. let's show our best smile po. So we, we shall be having three shots. Okay, so in my count, ready po tayo. One, two, three. Okay, so another shot po ulit. One, two, three. And for the last shot po, again, one, two, three. Okay, so before we end, ma'am, uh, let me show you po yung ating webinar, webinar evaluation. So again, don't forget po, so tomorrow, by tomorrow, By tomorrow po, we will help the, uh, we will assist the Zoom participants to accomplish po yung webinar evaluation. So for now, uh, we will be flashing the Okay, that's it. Our webinar, webinar evaluation. So kindly accomplish the general evaluation, module evaluation, and resource person evaluation. So accessible via the OTMS portal. So the OTMS link provided. 
in the screen and the control number was provided by the event secretariat. So again, uh, by tomorrow po, we will uh, assist the Zoom participants how to accomplish this evaluation. That is it. That concludes the second day of the online training for the municipal local government units on Government Procurement Reform Act or the, or the Republic Act number 9184 and its 2016 revised implementing rules and regulations. On behalf of the Government Procurement Policy Board Technical Support Office, this has been your facilitator, Jocelyn Basdik. Thank you all very much and see you all. Okay. And again, thank you very much, Ma'am Aimee, for uh, yes. providing the very important details po on the conduct of the procurement planning. Po. Yes, you're welcome, Joe.